When did you have the moment, I made it, I did it. Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of She Made It, where we highlight some amazing female founders who are shaking up their industries and turning their light bulb ideas into reality. For this half hour, I'll be telling you all about some of my favorite brands to help you look and feel your best, whether it's a cozy blanket to help us unwind or a unique way for gifting to those you love. We have got you covered. Plus, I'll reveal my She Made It It list featuring Four small businesses you'll want to shop, all from dynamic women you'll want to support. So let's get started. First up, I want to introduce you to Birdie Lashes, founder Yasmin Maya, an influencer who went from doing makeup tutorials to launching her own beauty brand. And she has overcome some incredible challenges on her path to success. Take a look. Influencer Yasmin Maya has over 3 million followers glued to her makeup and hair tutorials. Hey my beauties, welcome back to my channel. Bienvenidas a nuevo mi canal, yo soy... At 30 years old, the wife and mom with baby number two on the way. Aww, Good baby bump. <laughs> is also behind Birdie Lashes, the brand she officially launched last December with foam ink lashes and eyeliner that doubles as adhesive. What makes your lashes so easy? Because I know a lot of people are like, okay, it's another lash and I can't ever put them on myself. Our lashes are vegan, cruelty-free. They're super ultra soft and they're very light. So you're not gonna feel them heavy. You just pop it right on top of the eyeliner and it will stay. How proud are you of yourself? I look back and it's unbelievable. Hi guys. Okay, welcome to my channel. Nine years ago, Yasmin started her YouTube channel, Beauty Bird. She was living alone and in limbo, not in the Southern California town where she was raised, but in her birth country. I'm going actually through a really hard time right now. Walk us through what your childhood was like and what you went through. I was born in Mexico, very poor, like almost homeless. I didn't move here to the United States until I was like a year and three months. I grew up thinking I was part of this country and it wasn't until I got to high school when my mom got deported that it hit me with the reality that I am actually an illegal immigrant. Yasmin's father, also not a U.S. citizen, was deported shortly after her graduation. I started realizing I'm not going to be able to apply for a job or even go to college and get scholarships. I was in fear of deportation. Then at 18, Yasmin boldly left the only place she had called home bound for Tijuana, hoping to find work until she could return without worry. It's not a life, honestly, to just live in fear. My boyfriend went after me and we ended up getting married. But her husband had to patiently wait for her in the States. Even her parents had legally returned to this side of the border. Yasmin was on her own for three years, waiting on her green card. Well, every day I would cry. <laughs> So how did you overcome that? I started watching YouTube videos, girls doing makeup, and my mom was like, why don't you give it a try? And I was like, you know what, you're right, I have nothing to lose. Short on cash, Yasmin receives a camera and cosmetics from her mother. But then, she accidentally burned off her lashes while heating hot water for the shower. My little tiny eyelashes. I was so sad, and it was like, no, I'm not gonna give up. I went out and bought my first false lashes. Is that incredible? Yeah. Finally, reuniting with her family in May of 2013, she continued to post and rake in ads and sponsorships, and a new dream emerged. I started seeing more and more people saying, I unfortunately don't know how to apply lashes. She decided to develop an affordable false lash line for every eye shape. Whatever fiesta that you can think of, this is for you. Today, with close to 80,000 units of lashes sold and a multi-million dollar portfolio across all of her businesses, Yasmin feels her success as a Mexican Latina immigrant is especially poignant at this time. What I try to do is use my voice for other people that feel like they need to be quiet or ashamed of like where they're coming from. And so I take this month very serious to try and use it to our advantage and just be heard. Any dream is possible. We have some samples here. They're so easy to use. And after our She Made It segment, Yasmin told us that Birdie Lashes saw an incredible boost in sales and website engagement. Most recently, 
the brand launched their Wing It mascara. It's their first ever mascara with a custom dual tip, and it's waterproof too. We all love that. Yay, birdie lashes. All right, I love this next one too. Katherine Ham is an entrepreneur who built her Baraby business based on comfort. And today, she's turned her homemade weighted blankets into a multi million dollar brand. Growing up in Germany, it was normal to nap during the afternoon. And then once I moved here to the US, I realized that actually nobody is napping. I think it's almost frowned upon. Feel like you need a nap? Well, Catherine Ham has you covered. I mean, no one has a master's in blankets. So what was your <laughs> background? I used to be an economist at the World Bank. With the constant traveling, I just felt exhausted, not being able to sleep, waking up multiple times at night. It just really affects you and it affects your day. Back in 2016, Catherine researched products to help her sleep and came across weighted blankets. It was just a complete game changer for me. I slept like never before. The only problem I had with this blanket that it just made me really hot. It was filled with all these plastic beads. So it was noisy and I just realized there was no way that I could sleep under that blanket for an entire night. After getting nearly 50 no's from potential manufacturers, Catherine took matters into her own hands, enlisting her mom to knit her first prototype out of their garage. The blanket was heavy, it looked beautiful, and it felt cozy, calming, and most importantly, it didn't make me hot. So that's when I realized that we had created something really special. She called the business Baraby, a combination of the words bear hug and lullaby. Baraby officially launched online in December 2018 and sold out in two weeks. What was the turning point? Because you turned this into a multi-million dollar business. One morning I woke up and I had an email from West Elm in my inbox and they wanted to see our blankets and come to our New York showroom. And I mean, I almost broke down laughing because we didn't have a showroom at that time. We were just right. so, You're like, come to my garage and see my mother and I. I think I did what any entrepreneur would do at this stage. So how about we come to your place? So we borrowed a hotel trolley and we pushed the whole trolley with 300 pounds of blankets down the street to West Elm and they immediately loved them and they were ready to order. Baraby made over $21 million in revenue in 2020 and recently had a cameo in an iconic TV show. So we just launched in Nordstrom's Countrywide and if you happen to watch Sex in the City, you might have spotted our blankets on set. Yeah, we've been growing from two people. Wait, 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 uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just really like <laughs> blew over that. Tell us the scene. Tell us how that happens. Cynthia Nixon has a blanket and she was directing that scene. So it's like a pinch wow. me moment because I'm a huge fan. And as CEO, Catherine is trying to create a dreamy office environment for Barabee's workforce. We work from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And outside of these co-working hours, everyone can be flexible. Some people like to nap, some people like to walk their dogs, and other people like to spend time with their children. I assume that your employees respond well to that. Just saying, if you get your work done whenever you can get it done, I want to encourage you to feel rested and healthy and inspire wellness. We don't have to earn rest. We actually need rest. I think it's a, it's it works wonders just to put 20 minutes on the calendar for a nap. For someone sitting at home who has an idea like this and who's not in the field they want to be in or has an idea about something that doesn't exist, what would be your best advice? Every business starts with an idea and it's more about the courage to take the first step. Doesn't that just make you want to curl up and take a good nap? Well, since Barabee's launch, the company has grown more than 5,000%. And in the spirit of Barabee's mission to create a calmer, more comforted world, this past spring, Barabee launched the Hug It, a sensory knot pillow that provides stylish stress relief. We could all use that. Okay, but don't go to sleep just yet because there's much more to come. Next, supermodel turned mogul Winnie Harlow shares her personal story of building her skincare line, plus how one woman is reinventing the ear piercing experience. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to She Made It. Winnie Harlow is a groundbreaking supermodel in her own right. Here's a look how one of the biggest names in fashion took her talents from the runway to the sun care aisle. Take a look. I've been able to showcase everyone else's work, the things that they've labored on, and now I get to do the same for myself. It's a dream come true. For years, Winnie Harlow has been blazing a trail in the fashion industry, but now she's making strides in business as well. After everything you've been through, and I know this goes back to childhood, how important is that title for you, entrepreneur? My mom is a hairdresser and she had her own salon. My dad is a mechanic in Jamaica and still runs his own shop. I was thinking, where do I get this from? And I was just like, wait, it's in my blood, you know? It, it's from my parents. As a child, Winnie was diagnosed with the skin condition, vitiligo. It's hard enough being a kid to begin with, but right. kids were so mean and saying names to you. Tell me about your childhood. When you're in a small town, especially as a young kid, it feels like that is the end all and be all. It seems like the end of the world, but it's really just the beginning of your life. After competing on America's Next Top Model, Winnie started making a name for herself on high fashion runways and at photo shoots for big brands. Walking Victoria's Secret was incredible for me, life-changing. A lot of people don't know this, but I did try out for Victoria's Secret the year before and I didn't get it. And so getting it the second time was amazing. Like any Vogue cover I'm on, I'm the first model with Vitiligo to be on that cover. So that is mind blowing to me because I had never seen myself represented growing up. Winnie says in 2018, an incident on a set inspired her to take action. I had this horrible experience on set at a shoot where no one wanted me to apply sunscreen. It made my, my skin look purple and gray and it wasn't great for the photo shoot. So, you know, I went without to get the best shots, but after two days of shooting from sun up to sun down in the Bahamas, I was burnt to a crisp. I was like in so much pain. I had to have doctors give me injections for, for pain, for inflammation. And I realized that there wasn't sun care on the market that made you look gorgeous and also be well protected. Winnie got to work developing skincare products. I think people think you're a supermodel, things just, you know, you just, you get a line and it doesn't work like that. I had no idea where to start. I had the idea, like it's my brainchild, but I had no business savvy. I think some of the most challenging things for me were one, hearing all those no's when we were, when we started fundraising, especially being a business that was created in a pandemic where things were already being pushed back with packaging and the formulas and like our factories shutting down for COVID. And, you know, there were so many steps back every time we were taking steps forward. Nearly three years later, Winnie raised $6.5 million from investors to launch K-Skin, a sun care line inspired by the beaches of her family Family's native Jamaica. I wanted to put things that I've used since I was a kid going to Jamaica and staying with my dad. They used to cut the aloe vera plant and rub it directly onto our skin for like mosquito bites or sunburns. We also have hydrating nectar, which is from different fruits and botanicals. Winnie hopes to inspire people to take care of and to love the skin they're in. What would you say as advice to young girls out there who are going through a tough time who just like want to get through it and pursue her dream. I would say focus on yourself. There's only two things that you can really do in life. You can change things. And those things that you can't change, you got to move forward. Well, after we talked to Winnie for She Made It, the K-Skin team told us that K-Skin sales more than doubled. They've also expanded the line to include non-SPF lip and body care products, just the perfect pampering we need for fall and winter. Congratulations, Winnie. Great, great girl. Well, next up, a woman who is shaking up the piercing business. Rowan founder Louisa Schneider made it a point to create safe, hygienic, and fun piercing experiences for first-timers and those looking to get in on the ear party trend. Do your work, do your research, and don't let anyone make you feel like your idea is small. Because if you're passionate about it and you know that it resonates with other people, you were probably onto something. For entrepreneur Louisa Schneider, First-time ear piercing should not look like this scene from the hit movie Grease. Yeah. Oh! Oh. And I desperately wanted an option that I knew would be safe, but that would also be joyful. And so that was really when I started thinking about why didn't that concept exist already? 
Louisa launched Rowan in 2018, a come of passage into an experience worthy of a special celebration. To me, as a mom and as a woman, it was so clear that ear piercing is a milestone. And I was amazed that it had not been really modernized. So tell me how this idea started. I knew that even though malls were really suffering, one concept that continued to drive foot traffic was mall-based piercers. And around the time that my daughter was born, I took my nieces to get their ears pierced. And it wasn't a great experience. <laughs> The concept was pretty crowded and cluttered and tired. And I realized at that time that I would never take my daughter there. That's when Louisa started Rowan, a concierge ear piercing and subscription box service where customers could book a licensed nurse to perform piercings in the comfort of their own home. What was your first step? We started with a small proof of concept. So two nurses that were able to do a number of house calls and for us at Rowan, one of the most important things is thinking about the full experience. You may end up with an infection and that is something that we want to avoid. The business quickly grew. Louisa then opened Rowan's first piercing studio in New York City, coincidentally just half a block away from a big box store that would play a major part in the next step of their journey. I got reached out to on LinkedIn and the person who was reaching out to me had a target address. And I did not think it was real. So I actually ignored it for a few weeks. And then there was another persistent outreach. And I thought, well, there is a chance this is real. So I'm going to take the call. Target offered Rowan the opportunity to open full service piercing studios in stores across California. I love it. But the pandemic brought on new challenges for the company. The thought of having an intimate moment, piercing an ear during COVID was really uncertain. But as people became more knowledgeable about COVID and about safety protocol, there was this imprint of wanting a sterile environment. Rowan nurses are now in more than 200 target locations across the country. They've also opened a second standalone piercing studio, this time in Connecticut, and pierce as many as 20,000 ears a month. What do you think getting your ears pierced energetically represents? We say at Rowan, every piercing is a milestone and every milestone can be celebrated with a piercing. It's really a liberating form of self-expression. So doing it safely and having fun is really, you know, what it's all about. After our She Made It show, Rowan tells us they've since opened up nine studios across the country. And this month they are opening a location in Charlotte, North Carolina, and their very first mall location at the Mall of America. And it doesn't stop there. Chicago, Boston, and Miami, look out for a Rowan coming to you. I love hearing that. Well, up next, hear about women who made their dreams a reality from a female founder who is taking gifting to a whole new level and to a woman who's showing us that her business is on a roll. That's all coming up next.
Welcome back to our She Made It special focused on pampering and getting ready for the holidays. You're about to meet the entrepreneurs behind innovative companies who are helping us make our lives a little bit easier. First up, Toki founder Jane Park, who is putting a creative spin on gift giving. Take a look. My parents and I immigrated from Korea when I was four. We lived above their convenience store and I did my homework behind the cash register. I loved having a front row seat to their courage and resilience. Even though I went to law school, my passion for New Horizons pulled me into entrepreneurship. I took a leap to start my first business, a beauty tech startup in 2007. I raised millions of dollars and sold it for even more. A few years ago at Christmas, I was throwing out bags and bags of used gift wrap because most of it wasn't recyclable. I thought about how my Korean grandmother would wrap gifts in squares of cloth, which we saved to reuse again and again. So I got to work reinventing gift wrap to make it more sustainable with the digital twist by inventing a QR gift tag, which allows you to show up with your gift by uploading a photo or video. Toki means rabbit in Korean. And my hope is that our products will hop from friend to friend and celebration to celebration. Well, since our She Made It segment, Toki is now nationwide. And check this out. This summer, they just launched their latest product line, the Toki Eco Gifting Set. This line uses recycled water bottles to further reduce our emissions. And guess what? With every order of their Eco Gifting Set, Toki is giving viewers free additional bags, all with free shipping. Well, moving on to brand number two now, that's actually the name. Number two, founded by a woman who is wiping away the competition while saving the planet at the same time. Take a look. My name is Samira Farr, and to me, true luxury is living in a land plush with trees rather than cutting them down to make toilet paper. That's why I created Number Two, a stylish toilet paper that not only gives you a clean wipe, but also helps preserve our forests. In 2017, after selling my first business, I began to research the toilet paper industry. It felt outdated. I was shocked to find that TV can be made from alternative fibers like bamboo, and that there aren't a lot of brands that don't use plastic packaging. I also learned that bamboo can grow at a much faster rate than trees, making it a way more eco-friendly option. I launched number two toilet paper in 2019 and have grown from selling only online to selling from bigger home goods stores like Urban Outfitters and Lowe's Home Improvement. Customers love the strength and quality of the teepee, as well as the stylish patterns. But most importantly, they are thrilled to be saving the planet one wipe at a time. Love this. Well, number two is now introducing 100% bamboo paper towels and facial tissue. And they have exciting news. Early next year, number two is now becoming Rizzy Home and will continue to expand Band, its line of home goods. Congratulations to them. I use this and just love the packaging. How else can you give toilet paper as a gift? Well, there's still much more to come. Up next, it's our She Made It It list for women-owned small businesses that will help you feel your best this season. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. I have even more extraordinary female founded brands that I'm so excited to share with you on my She Made It It list. Brand number one, Dogwood Hill. In 2014, founder Jennifer Hunt saw a gap in the market for online art-driven holiday cards, so she did something about it. Jennifer's mission was to create a website where customers could go for personalized cards that eliminated the lengthy design times and pricey design fees. So. Dogwood Hill was born. With its collective of over 30 artists, Dogwood Hill is able to supply products within 10 days that are unique and personalized for you and your families. What a great way to wrap a gift and beautiful quality. All right, brand number two, Clean Circle. Lena Chow launched her skincare reusable products that replace single-use makeup wipes and cotton rounds. As the first-generation daughter whose mom worked as a seamstress, Lena knew the ins and outs of the textile industry and set out to create beauty reusables with certified clean fabrics. Clean Circle's mission is to reduce beauty waste all while protecting your skin from environmental stressors. These are great. Brand three, Palermo Body. Jessica Morelli is the founder and formulator of the skincare line that is all about nourishing the skin and stimulating the mind. At an early age, Jessica was inspired by the natural skincare practices of her Sicilian grandmother. Their revitalizing body scrub has become a favorite among customers, and just recently, Palermo Body launched their breast cancer initiative, donating $5 of every purchase of the scrub to breast cancer research. Such an unbelievable cause and really, really great products. All right, last up, Lucky 13 Candles. Lawyer and founder Amina Max started her massage oil candle company in 2019 to connect her with her then fiance and now husband. Guess it worked. So she taught herself how to make candles that turn into massage oils with all natural ingredients. Amina reports that the connection with her husband is stronger than ever, and Lucky 13 Candles will be getting into retail stores early next year. Just love this. Well, that's all for our She Made It today. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to shop these small businesses, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen, or head over to today.com slash shop. I'm Joel Martin. I'm so excited you watched the show. Such great entrepreneurs, and we'll see you next time. And welcome back this morning. We are rounding out Restaurant Week on today with famed celebrity chef, restaurateur, television host, and all-around great guy. Of course, he also happens to be the mayor of Flavortown. The mayor of Flavortown. That's right. Uh, he is up early for us in Santa Rosa, California, alongside his son, the deputy mayor of Flavortown, uh, Hunter Fieri, also there. Good to see you both. Thanks so much. for. Hey, God, before we start cooking, I, I think folks should know, last year you raised... I believe about $21 million uh, for, for employees of the restaurant industry, the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund last year. First of all, kudos to you. But secondly, do you think we're at a point where some restaurants are starting to get back on their feet? Well, I, one, thank you for recognizing that. And there were so many great people that were involved in raising that money. We got almost to $25 million. Uh, the money kept wow. trickling in there at the end. But the National Restaurant Association was amazing in, in helping that happen. Uh, we gave out 43,000 grants, by the way, Al. But I'll tell you, um, yeah, the restaurant business is we're coming back. We're coming back a little bit different. You know, people are learning a lot more about to go, a lot more about delivery. Um, they're learning to, uh, you know, they're kind of learning how their restaurants are able to work. The, the dining in is, is still a really difficult part. And dining out can't happen all over the country, especially because of weather. But uh, restaurants are coming back. We're resilient. I mean, this, yeah. is, this is what we do in this industry. Hmm. Your new season of Tournament of Champions helps local restaurants. Can you tell us about the impact of that? Well, okay. So Tournament of Champions, in, I, listen, I've done so many different types of shows on the Food Network, and this is really one of my favorites. I designed this about three or four years ago with my buddy Brian Lando. And you know what we said is we want to make a competition that can never be duplicated. Mm -hmm. This randomizer that you see spinning right there, that gives a different protein, a different vegetable, uh, a different piece of equipment, different style of food, and different time for each competition. And these chefs are really put under the – I mean, they're put under the gun. I, I've never seen anything this hard. I mean, and, and I think Iron Chef and all the competitions that have happened before this, uh, but this one right here really puts them to the test. 
And uh, the new season starts this Sunday on, on the 7th. And wait till you see the chefs and wait till you see what they do. Blow your mind. All right, let's get to this burger. I see you're about to flip it. What is, what, is, <laughs> what is Hunter making over there? What is he stirring up? Well, Hunter's over here working on uh, making a lot of something. Hunter's making, <laughs> Hunter's making the famous donkey sauce. And we use this by the gallon, of course. No, I don't know why we're making this much. But it's got roasted garlic. It's got a little bit of Worcestershire, mustard, a little salt, a little pepper, a um, little mayonnaise, of course. And this mm-hmm. really is this is our signature burger that we do at Flavortown Kitchen. We do at all the Guy Fieri restaurants. And, of course, we love to make for you guys at 5 a.m. in California. Um, <laughs> but you're, adding ma- you're ma- adding mac and cheese to this guy? So, the ma- so we've got some macaroni that's done here going into the cheese sauce that we made. We call it Super, Super Melted Cheese, SMC. Mm. Okay, so we'll take this mac and cheese into that. Hunter will go ahead and bring me a couple pieces oh, like of uh, cheddar more, cheese. Yeah. It's more okay. cheese than mac, right, Mr. Mayor? Well, what and we like cheese. to do is, is really accentuate wow. the cheese side of things, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. We'll throw the uh, dome on top of that, a little water. You want to hit me with a bun, Hunter? Wow. I don't know if you can see us through. These are yeah. special effects, oh. by the way, you guys. This is really us at it's home. A deep oh, I thought he was going to actually hit you with a bun. No, he would. Trust me. Don't, don't, don't start. He'll get into this. He, I made him get up early. He wasn't super thrilled about that idea. All right. So we get a little bit of that. Hunter's toasting the bun. He'll hit it with a little of the uh, donkey sauce. But yeah, so Tournament of Champions is happening. And I'll tell you, we're coming back. We've been shooting a lot of guys grocery games, what we call guys grocery games delivery that we shoot here in this kitchen at our house. And we've also been doing a lot of, uh, of Triple D takeout. So we couldn't go to, a, to our favorite Triple D restaurant because everybody was closed. But the restaurants were still operating with their delivery and their to-go. So we said, hey, why not send us some of those new dishes that you guys are doing, and we'll highlight them. So we started mm-hmm. to highlight these. Uh, Hunter, I think we shot probably 30 shows during oh, the pandemic. Yeah. And that was awesome. Kept the, the TV crew working, That's kept awesome. the restaurants going, and hopefully kept people in I'm worried about the burger. Is it going to burn? No. Oh, no. The master Does that look burnt? Get in and take no. a shot of that burger. That is real good. Can you do that on a grill, right guy? Point. That is impressive. This is on a plancha, so just basically like a flat cast iron skillet. Hunter's got pickles, tomatoes, and onions down right here. Donkey and like sauce. I said, this is the signature burger that we do mm. at all the Guy Fieri restaurants. We'll hit a couple pieces so of bacon pick, pick your, uh, on yeah. top of that. Hunter will hit a wow. little bit of lettuce. So On good. top of that, let's oh, get some so onion good. straws. <laughs> of course. Yeah, a little touch of vinegar. If you were in the studio right now, I would take a bite of that giant burger and embarrass okay. myself on national television. Let, yeah. Hey, I'm going to send you this burger. That's <laughs> what you need to be thinking about. Yeah. I, like, look at that. I pay a hundred bucks to see you take a bite of that. Box. That's that a beautiful burger. That in his face looks so good. Guy, yes, yes, honestly, yes. almost 25 million. You've done so much for your own industry. So, I mean, Craig said it. God bless you for that. Hunter, go back to bed. I mean, don't even. <laughs> no, no. You can't say goodbye to Hunter. Why? You. Take a Tell bite. Tell me where you want me to send this. <laughs> I want, I want to take Rockefeller a bite. Plaza. Okay, so you yeah. take a bite, guy. <laughs> All right. All right. Somebody just said that they were going to give thousands of dollars to, to the program if we, if we cool. take a bite. So Hunter's back on the fourth You know, this is breaking, oh, this is the, breaking okay. the breakfast of champion routine. There you go. This is all for you, Al. All right. I know Yum. you appreciate Here we go. this. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, watch the technique. We're living through there. you, right? There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. That's Fourth hour, they're about. back. And for the recipe there, you can check it out. Head to today.com slash food. Thank you, boys. We'll see you in a couple hours. Thanks, guys. This morning on today, food, dinner, and a dash. We're talking weeknight meals, ready to eat, in less than 30 minutes. 30 minutes or less. Mm-hmm. Valerie Bertinelli, mm-hmm. two words for you. Hamburger. Helper. Yeah. I haven't had hamburger helper in like 25 years. It, it's ridiculously easy to do. It's that one of those comfort foods that just stick to your gut. Oh, it's that you guys are already enjoying it. So and I'll show you how easy it is. Literally, you just get the ground beef ground okay. up. And, and nice and browned. Add in the spices. We got a little bit of salt. We got a little bit of paprika and uh, mustard and garlic. Okay. Onion powder. And you get can swap out there. the beef, obviously, for turkey. Or, you could absolutely okay. do that. And um, when I get to the... Um, the macaroni. See, I'm just toasting up the spices here right now. Okay. And getting some flavor on there. And then this is an all one pot. I don't like to dirty a lot of dishes mm-hmm. yeah. when I'm cooking in the kitchen on a weeknight. So I'm going to throw all the macaroni into the same pot. Oh, and it's not cooked when you when you throw nope, it in. Nope, not cooked. It's wow. going to cook up. And, and the, all of the starch from the macaroni is going to thicken up the oh. cheese mixture. Oh. So we got some water in there. You got to get some milk in there. A little milk. Oh, so good. Milk. Whole milk. Whole milk. Yeah, of course. Yeah, come on. 
I mean, there's all the cheese and everything else. What are you going to Why, 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 why skip on the milk? The milk? Yeah. It's true. That's a good point. So that all gets uh, heated up, and then it turns into this young, unctuous, lovely, mm. like, oh, there's a bunch of uh, cheddar cheese in there. I got sharp cheddar and regular American cheese. Get, that gets all mixed up, and you can see how thick it gets mm. just from the heat and just... Um, thickening up from the starch. So you use right two there. kinds of cheese. I use two kinds of cheese. You can use the white cheddar. You can use the. I like to get a little color in there, so that's the cheddar I, I use. I love that you add the American. It adds just a tang that mm -hmm. makes yeah. it much more comforting. Right? I mean, American cheese and burger meat go together. Yeah, so <laughs> they're meant to be together. What are you topping it with? Here? I'm going to top it off with a little bit of onion. Oh. And just get that right over it. Make it look all pretty. Now you can also um, use. Um, Gluten-free pasta, I made it with gluten-free a few mm -hmm. weeks ago, yeah. and it worked just as well. Sometimes okay. the gluten-free doesn't get um, let off as much starch, right. so you just add a little cornstarch in there, just okay. a tiny bit, and What's that'll What's the verdict, ladies? I mean, delicious. The yummiest. Good. The best. So Good. Delicious. And again, you, this, you say 30 minutes, you could probably do that in like 20. Well, just, you need, you're waiting yeah. for the pasta to cook. Yeah. yeah. To get al dente, yeah. that's all it is. And kids mm -hmm. would love it, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's delicious. It's that's still, I mean, it's so tasty. Kids would love it. And it's easier than the box. All right. Now, you want dessert? Mm -hmm. I do want dessert. Yeah. I always okay. want dessert. So I got some. This is Wolfie's absolute favorite dessert mm. every um, this time of year. It's pumpkin pudding, and All you're right. going to make your own pudding, and you're going to realize right. how easy it is. So we got a little bit of cream in here. We got some pumpkin puree. Always get the pumpkin mm. puree, not the pumpkin pie mixture, oh. because you want to add all your pumpkin own spices. Pie. You want to add Ooh. the ginger and pumpkin the nutmeg pie. and the cinnamon and all the things and all spice that go in here. What are these? Those are ginger snaps, and oh. those are, mm. we're going to layer the pudding with ginger snaps. I'm getting ahead. Get ahead. So get you got, we got our wet ingredients My here. Goodness. We need to separate the eggs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. That's a very soft shell. Yeah. So, um, I've never yeah. seen you do that on your show. <laughs> you know, you've out. never done that. <laughs> well, I'm going to get that yolk out anyway. So we're going to separate the eggs from the from the shell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you know what? Mistakes happen in the kitchen there you go. all the time. Live TV. Yeah. So you go. Oh, wait. First, I got to get the cornstarch in here. Right. Look, I'm all for clumps now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A little bit of salt. Don't ever be afraid of putting salt into your sweets. Mm -hmm. It's going to really just take the flavor that much. Like, it's just, oh, I used the, oh, shoot. <laughs> I used the whisk, but I should have saved it for this. this. Okay, so well, well. you know what? Let me, um, here, here's a, well, that's not a whisk down there. That's a, oh, we well. can still use Anyway, you mix this up. You're going to mix this up. Oh, uh, <laughs> Get the egg in there. Yeah, you know what? Uh, why not? Why not? Get the egg yolks in there. Mix that all together. Uh -huh. That cornstarch is going to then protect mm -hmm. you Thanks. as you. That's very good. Right? Thank you. I'm very Thank you, impressed. Thank you, Val. Better than me uh, chopping up these <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so then, after we're done here, after you want to temper this now with this hot mixture of the milk and the and the puree and the spices. Oh, it's going to go in the. Oh. And you start tempering this together and mix it together. Oh, I'm this is that. just. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the kitchen. I, I swear it. it's much easier than what I'm making it. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Then you get. That that all mixed together, and somehow it magically turns into this. <laughs> Go Valerie. <laughs> and you add a little bit of butter at the end to top it off, and a little bit of vanilla when it's cooled yeah. down because you don't want to heat up the vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> so you were at the New York wine show? That, what was it, the food? Yeah, wine I, I cook for a living. I actually got two Emmys for my show. I'm just saying. That books. Saying, that's all. Yeah, there's so a new I, app coming out. Yeah, there's a new app. You can cook along with me on the new app. Uh, yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to sample it. You know what, though? It turned out great. <laughs> By the way, it's so Valerie. so delicious. By the way, another reason to love Valerie Bertinelli, yeah. don't you think? Oh, oh my gosh, good. I love another. <laughs> That's good. I love you, Valerie. It's like pumpkin pie. It's it is, better. isn't it? Yeah. Valerie, so thank yeah. you. Ginger You're very welcome, Craig. <laughs> Today.com slash food for the recipes.
Welcome back this morning on Today Food. We are making a simple and filling summer salad. Yes. Joining us now, one of our favorites, the founder of Fit Cook Meals, Kevin Curry. Cheeseburger is one of my favorite things. I yes. like to eat a salad. Yes. Sounds pretty good together. This How do is, we do it? All right. First off is the sauce because the secret's always in the sauce. Yes. So you're going to take a, um, you know, like a pickles and just dice them up really, really finely. Oh. If you can't do this, just go ahead and buy some relish. You can buy sweet relish okay. or you can buy just the dill relish. Okay. All right. So we're going to add in some pickles here. Let me tie this up just a little bit finer. Yeah. Okay. Nice knife. Add nice skills to, there. There you go. Add that into the sauce. Now, for the sauce, we're going to use olive oil mayo. It's a little bit lower in fat. Oh. I know, don't. Where do you? Oh, no, I just never heard of that. Where do you find olive oil, oil mayo? In the grocery I mean, store. It's, it's, it's pretty. It's, it's really easy. All right, and then some Greek yogurt. This is going to boost the protein, but also add that little tanginess in there. Al's, <laughs> Al's heckling me. I know. Well, so I didn't know. I thought mayonnaise was mayonnaise. Did you know, Hoda? There's I, avocado. No, there's no there's avocado no base. No. Okay. Okay. It's a little lighter. Okay. A little Olive oil. <laughs> Coconut sugar for that smokiness. These things out. Some smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that smokiness. Yes. Onion. And then we've got some vinegar here. Yeah. And then some olive oil. I'm gonna have you whisk this. Okay. And I'll then this it. is just some water. And okay. you're gonna just add some water until yeah. you reach your desired consistency. Okay. I like this. This is also this. gonna be dressing. Now this is good for burgers and stuff, y'all, but it's also good for salads. Mm. Like yeah, for like the cookout. It's a special sauce. It's a, it's a today's special sauce. You know I'm like looking out for y'all. There you go. Thank you. All right. Now it's a little chunky because I have those pickles in it. Yes, yeah. but you okay. can try them up, you know, like finer too. Yeah. Oh, oh that best. looks great. Thank you. Perfect, y'all. Good, good, good job. Recent hey, job. I know. She's cooking, cooking okay. today. Uh -huh. All right. Now, we have got the protein. The protein yes. is super important. So this is some lean beef, but yeah. you can also use turkey, chicken, whatever. You're going to season it up with some garlic. Am and I just some onion. Yeah, throw just it all on yeah, there? Let's put it in there. Now, really important, whenever you're cooking up your meat, it I may have some water. OK, that's that's too. Well, yeah, I we know. Can, I don't know. I was trying. Oh you know what I was thinking? Like sprinkle, oh, and then oh, it would be sprinkle. more evenly distributed. Okay, but, that, but that's with the pepper, oh, though. Wow, we can just pour. sprinkle oh, okay, like that. Okay, it, okay. It's OK. We got it. We got it. Sorry. Yeah, it's just it's add all good. Pounds of meat. The most important oh. thing is that if you have a whole bunch of liquid here, you don't yes. want boiled meat. So just Ooh. drain your meat, yeah. put it back onto the heat, okay. and yeah. sear it up some more. Add this in there, sea salt and pepper. Remember, mm -hmm. we got to do this. This is live television. Make mm -hmm. sure they know we mm -hmm. season our food yeah, here. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. they'll yell at you. Yes, so we so you know they will. <laughs> okay. We did, we did. Sea salt, More pepper, salt. there you go. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Now. For the salad, we're gonna chop up some romaine here. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. I like to have mine like pretty finely because I want every single bite to have something in it. Yes. Now, we've got cherry tomatoes. You can have them or, you know, quarter, or quarter them. them. Yep. Add it to our salad here. Mm -hmm. Now, in goes the beef or yes. your protein. What's a cheeseburger without what? Oh, you gotta have a little cheddar Add cheese. Add a little cheese. Oh, there yeah. we go. Some onion action. Why don't nice. you go ahead and toss that together for okay. me? And I'm gonna add in some of our secret sauce. Okay. And you just tell me when to say stop. No, I'd say keep on going. That's right. Oh, hey, some more sauce, right? right. More. <laughs> Do you love that sauce? More. You can yes. use the sauce on a, a slew of things. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you can on use this. it on anything. Does it keep it in the fridge for a couple it days? It keeps in the fridge, yeah. but it's not going to last long because you're going to eat it. Yeah, it's so true. Okay. You're going to smear it now. You can have this as a tossed salad, but I love mine in a wrap, y'all, because, you know, this is all about grab and go for the summertime. I'm going to put a little bit more sauce here on this wrap. Why don't you go ahead? This looks great. Oh, thank you. This is like restaurant quality. I'm, I'm so, I'm so impressed. Show, I've chef. shared before. <laughs> okay. Use these tongs. Uh -huh. We're going to put that in there. Okay. Add that to the wrap. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't have a cheeseburger without the sesame seed bun. Oh, this could be a nice lunch for kids or like seed. even a kid camp lunch. If Absolutely. You, you may want to add it. Too some, much. I think that's fine. Okay. We're going to add in some oh. sesame seeds. Oh, yeah. We're going to add in some pickles as well Love if you it. want some more. All right. Now, do you know how to wrap up a, a wrap? No, we show me. The, okay, show here me we go. So technique. this is this is what I, I do. I can swaddle a baby. I'm for, but this yeah, I don't you gotta know. do this right here. All right. Okay. Now, now once you do this, you're gonna put it to one side. Okay. Hold oh, it, interesting. Pull oh, it over. Oh, 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 oh. I never knew that's that. that. Yes. Yeah. And then there you go. Oh it my is gosh. wrapped. Wow, wow you did that snug now, as a fucking rock. Yes. Wow. And you know, and you should also think about toasting them too. You know, so oh. once this is empty, put that back into the skillet, you know, toast it. Oh, yeah, yeah, get it nice and crispy, toast like restaurant wrap, style. Like just put yes. it in there. Oh, nice. And then toast Delicious all the sides stuff. of it. People are gonna be like, "Yo, I like that." Get that.
with today. Food loves football to get you ready for the big Sunday night battle here on NBC. Pittsburgh Steelers, L.A. Chargers, here to get us in the spirit with some game day eats. Cookbook author and restaurant owner Adrian Calvo. Adrian, thank you for being here. It's oh Shirley out on the plaza. Hi. Savannah joins Woo. us. We're going to start with this beautiful Italian sandwich. Yes, an outrageous Italian sandwich. It is outrageous. Maximum flavor style. Lots of flavors. We have here some ciabatta bread, some fresh mozzarella. Yep. Got to use the fresh stuff. Mm. We're going to cut that into about quarter inch pieces. Okay. Now, don't skimp on the fresh stuff. Building yeah. ingredients, using great ingredients is, is That makes a difference. Yeah. Why do you like the yeah. ciabatta? The chewiness, but the lightness of it as well. But yep. you know, any rustic Italian bread really will do. Mm -hmm. So okay. you get some pesto down? Pesto down on both sides. I need a mm. chainsaw <laughs> for this. And then we're gonna start pressing our meats. Now I like to use pepperoni, prosciutto, salami, mm. but guess what? You have turkey and ham left over for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Swap that out, okay? Do I do so, a layer on the cheese now? Same. Please, layer here. We have some sliced oh. up as oh, well. Geez, okay. Yes. Oh, Adrian, that is that's Isn't that fantastic? fantastic? So we layer on some this? peppers, pepperoncini. It should look like this. We press it. Smells so good. With something heavy in the fridge overnight. Oh, the skillet. The skillet goes on like this. Yep. Okay. Is you this have, a Pittsburgh thing? Yes. You oh, have, look at that. Gorgeous. Look at this, guys. <laughs> that's yes. my half, that's half. Yeah. I like that. This is I like delicious. That. <laughs> Next. You know, it's not football without a queso, without a cheese dip, yes. right? That's right. So we have here some chorizo, okay? Now we're going to use some Oaxaca cheese or, you know, any any type of creamy, melty cheese mm -hmm. will work, okay? So we saute it like so uh -huh. over medium-high heat. Okay. Now the flavors really come out here. This is one of the most important steps. Okay. So now we just to get a good mm. saté of the chorizo first. With exactly. our tasting okay. table, guys, how is the now, Pittsburgh sandwich? Here, it's good. we're like going that? to add it into a casserole. You're moving it into a casserole. Exactly. Dish. Okay. Now we're going. <laughs> oh, now we're adding our. There you go. We're adding our Oaxaca cheese our Oaxaca or any cheese. melty cheese. Exactly. You can mm. mix cheeses as well too. Oh, sure if can. you can't get that type of cheese, provolone works well. Okay. Goes into the oven until it's nice and melty. Oh yeah. Melty. Oops. Yes. Serve it with tortilla chips okay. and some pico de gallo oh, or some yes. salsa. So delicious. That's maximum oh, really? flavor. It's so cold it kind of froze. Yes. It's supposed to be hot. It's super cold okay. here. Yeah, I know. Differs. All right. Well. No. Okay. What's next? Next, we have our cheeseburger tots, mm -hmm. which Wait, are cheeseburger tots. Cheeseburger tater tots. Yeah. You see? All it right. grabs your attention right wow. away. <laughs> we have some ground beef, some mm -hmm. onions, and who doesn't like onions and ground beef? Oh my gosh, right? All the so things. You saute that. Actually, you want to saute this for me? Oh, sure. Okay. If you think I can. Oh, absolutely. We're going to okay. add mayo right to the pan. Mm -hmm. Oh, some mayo. Interesting. Relish. And this is just ground beef and onions, right? Yep. Okay. Mustard. Not that you'd want to, but you could do ground turkey if you wanted to. Exactly. Or yeah. chicken. Okay. 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 So we saute that together. Here we have our tater tots. You're good. That's perfect. Okay. Oh, do you uh, want me to mix it more? Yeah. Mix yeah, it okay. until it's well How do you combined. make the tater tot a vessel for this burger meat? Here's the secret, guys. This is the secret. You use something like this, and you press the already baked tater tot. You make a shell. I do. Oh. Make you a shell. Make a shell. Oh, oh it's just the back of a yes. spoon. Yes. Exactly. Oh, if all else oh, yeah. fails, your thumb. Yeah, now, no. that stuffing okay. goes into okay. the potato. Yes. All right. And then we top it off oh, you got okay, the with some is pickles, pickle or mm. yeah. some oh, secret sauce. Now, are you baking this more or is this yes, just. Yes, we're okay. going to bake it a little bit more. Oh, my God. Okay. Pickle, yeah. pickle goes on top, yeah. like so. Now imagine all these flavors, secret sauce, pickle. Like a Big Mac. Yes. Now the potato, the brown What are those little seeds? Sesame seeds. Oh, sesame seeds. That's okay. like your bun that yes. has, you know, the sesame seeds on top. How's it taste, oh you guys? Carson, oh you left God. the segment. You're just over there it's eating. These thoughts are the truth. So and if you have any of these left, pop them out as hors d'oeuvres for Thanksgiving. That's oh. so fun. Right? <laughs> I love it. What do you think, guys? So Is that maximum flavor? Insane. Thank you. Oh. Oh, yes. Insane. Well done, Insane. Insane. The, Insane. the queso's <laughs> off. <laughs> My queso right. was frozen. All right, awesome. Yeah, but these are great. But it's good cold, too. And mm -hmm. it's all easy. Anybody mm. can I do told this. You. That is all right. delicious. All right. Okay, Adrian. You nailed it. Thank you so much. If you want to get more on these That's recipes, incredible. go to today.com slash food.
welcome back. This morning on Today Food, Good. we are joined by the popular host of Tiny Mighty Kitchen <laughs> over on YouTube, Chef Kia Damon. Hi. She is here with a surprisingly easy dinner recipe that your whole family will love. And we were standing over and we were getting a whiff and I was like, oh, it's like I'm seven again. And it's yeah. like hamburger helping. Exactly, exactly. No, it's definitely a comfort food. Much better. <laughs> but better. It's definitely a comfort food, but um, it's super easy to make. First, you want to start with your onion. Okay. Now I'm gonna go through, hold it, and slice it this way. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter what size the onion is. It doesn't have to be, you know, restaurant style size, but okay. you can get decent slices about yeah. here. Okay. And then you wanna cut it down this way, and you see you already have it's already those diced. pieces, yeah, right? It's already that. diced, okay. right? Oh, so you got our onion there. What else you have goes our in? Onion. Besides the onion, what else goes in? Garlic. Oh, so I like okay. to put. I'm a garlic girl, so I like to put a few a giant few cloves, cloves of garlic. And a great way to do that is to that's a put the pressure okay. on the yeah, knife like that. Too. And then use the whole clove. And then you use the whole clove, but okay. then you can just open it up. Got it. Like okay. that, and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. To get that flesh on. Right, so give us onion, a little garlic, kick. right? And onion and garlic, garlic. Okay. and then you chop up that garlic real quick like that. Okay. All right. And give it another little. <laughs> like that, oh, you know? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then over here, so you're adding it to our pot. This is ground beef. I suppose yes, you could do so ground this, turkey if you, you were do, in that. You could do ground turkey if but you wanted to. But why would you? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no shade to the turkey community. No yes. shade at all. <laughs> There's a community? There's, There's a turkey, turkey community. There's a turkey community for everything. They're smart. They'll come for you, too. <laughs> all right. And then, so for the second time, then do you just add the broth Yeah, then you it? go ahead and add in your broth and okay. your turkey. Not your turkey. Now you're going to be thinking about oh, turkey. Oh, sorry, sorry. Add in your tomato paste okay. over here. Tomato paste. Nice. Dump in the tomato Kia, paste. Kia, could you use this to hide vegetables for your kids in this? Yes. Now, if you want to do maybe a little bit of broccoli or a little bit of spinach, just to, like, put it in the cheese, then that would be okay there. for the children. You got some carrots. What's in the broth? Is it, like, a beef broth? Yeah. Okay. Just the beef broth. Put in some smoked paprika. Mix mm. that in. Thyme. And then this beef broth here. Okay. Now, while I'm doing this, I actually would like for someone to grate I can do that, this sure. cheese here. Okay. So He's a great grater. A really great idea and an easy thing to do yes, is you keep the cutter like this. Uh -huh. Okay. And oh, if you put the cheese part. over oh. like that, Another then it fills up. You keep it horizontal. You keep it horizontal, what kind of then it fills up. Here? Just some cheddar cheese. Just Could cheddar. you finish it up for me, please? Yes, yeah, I like cheddar. this because it's quick and homemade at the same time. Exactly. You know what I mean? You can lose the guild of the preservatives and what So you want to mix that in. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much cheese do I need? Mm -hmm. If you could get the, the more, whole the block, better. but I doubt you could get the whole block. Oh, oh, you don't think so? Okay. I don't think you could do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm trying it. So okay, challenge. now that pasta was not pre-cooked, right? No, because okay. what's going to happen is once you put all the liquid in here, mm -hmm. it's going to simmer over time. Got it. Oh. And then it's going to be done already. So this is going to stay on the stove top. That's going to stay on the stove top. Can't beat it. You're going to close that mm -hmm. like that. And then while you're working the on the cheese, right. I'll be done with I'm going to fan you. No, Whenever exactly. the cheese is actually finished, okay. seems like a good idea it'll look like this. <laughs> That's fantastic. No, Can't I think you it. did a great job. And no, absolutely. Do, please eat it. So, so you add the cheese over that way. Broker, you resisted the urge to make a comment about cutting the cheese. I'm so proud. Why should I when I've got Craig Melvin to do it? No, I think you do an amazing job. But at this point, you will add the cheese. You really do want this whole block of cheese. Okay. You're, <laughs> off the hook. You're off the hook, but you would ideally put okay. this cheese so into here uh -huh. after it's cooked it toward the end. And Kia, what 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 do we have here? Oh, that's nutritional yeast. Instead oh. of cheese, if you want to keep well, it. Well, you add that in addition because it adds an extra punch oh. to the dish. So put a little bit of that nutritional really yeast on I use that on my kale. Yeah, yeah, just it's a little really bit. Good. Don't keep cooking. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. And then you, yeah, you the can't beat like this. this. I mean, Thank this you. is 20 minutes. You know I, I mean? appreciate wow. that. So Thank good. you so very much. And the kids, kids can help. I was just yeah. about to say, they and can help the kids and they'll eat can it. Help. And I helped. Then you help. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. No, thank this you so terrific. much. Thank oh, you for having good. me, right? Yeah, I mean, thank you. I oh, appreciate that. that. My kids will gobble that up. <laughs> yes. Beth might just take it home. Dinner is served. Yeah, All right. <laughs> Kia, thank you so much. No, thank, thank, you, thank you so you much. Guys. Thank you, thank you. Be sure to check out her full recipe. It's today.com slash food. Good morning, guys. Welcome to The Boost. The holiday season's here, and today we're going to start with a sweet story to warm your heart. Harry Smith paid a visit to the picturesque small town of Springfield, New York, where a very special ice skating rink is bringing the community together. Take a look. In these days when it feels like 
There's more going on that pulls us apart than that which draws us together. We present this contradiction, the brand new ice rink in Springfield, New York. I mean, it's just crazy. It's like this every day here. Galen Cricky is the town supervisor. The day we visited, wind chill was six below zero. And this kind of weather, people out here shoveling away and people donating skates. We have 50 pairs of skates and they're all donated. Kids, adults, beginners, all are welcome. And by the looks of it, all are darn happy to be here. How big of a plus has this been for your town? Oh gosh, huge, huge, very big. There's not a lot to do here in the winter. Maggie Picorni teaches middle school and comes here often to unwind. People come and want to get out, you know, after work, after school, get some fresh air. It's a great place to be. It sure looked great to us. And how, we wondered, did this come to be? A $5,000 budget and a vision. I thought about it for two weeks, and it kept nagging at me and nagging at me. And I was nervous because I knew it was going to be a lot of work. But when you have an idea that strong, you can't ignore it. The frozen equivalent of Field of Dreams, says Ashley Sykema, who runs the parks here. When we built it, we started saying, if you build it, they will come. And they came. <laughs> and they keep coming more and more every day. Built in large part by town folk, ultra-capable Amish neighbors who already had ranks of their own. Out of respect for the Amish, we blurred some images. None of them would take any payment. The town offered to pay them and they wouldn't take any payment. And Amish man, Wayne Stutzman, who led the effort, even came up with a backyard version of a Zamboni to keep the ice smooth. Normally, we're out here for at least two, at least. Uh, we're coming up, I think we're coming up on four hours now, so. Uh. Benjamin Munyon and his daughter, Bridget, are here most every day. How much do you like coming out to the skating rink? I like it a lot. You like it a lot? <laughs> I can tell because I see no sign in you four hours in of like, it's time to go, Dad. I don't see anybody. You're not tugging on your dad's sleeve. No. I think we would spend all day out here if we could. It's not fancy, this ice rink, but it seems to function in a way that far exceeds anyone's expectations. When we all get together and we spend time together, we get to know each other and focus on what we have in common, that joy just builds and spreads. Imagine one of these in your town. You know what they say, if you build it. From New York, we now head to Minnesota, where a mill changed its whole business model. They're on a mission to help spread warmth and share love all year round, providing blankets to people who could really use them. Joe Fryer has that story. At Fairbow Mill, a blanket is so much more than a billowing scrap of fabric. Making one is a 22-step process. What is this? That is wool. Wool. Supervisor Rafael Medina showed us how clouds of wool are dyed and dried in industrial-sized machines. So this is a little bigger than the dryers in our houses, right? Definitely. Gradually, they're shaped into strands of strong yarn that are woven into cuddly... I make them fluffy? ...colorful coverings. What do you think when you see the final product coming together? I think it's like a painting. It looks like a painting being made. An elaborate operation that recently added a 23rd step. You see, many of the blankets are now delivered to shelters. Oh, I like the colors. That are helping young people who are experiencing homelessness. For us to be able to just provide even some comfort, it really says a lot about the mill, you know, itself. It gives you even more pride. Definitely, it definitely does. Hi guys, if anyone wants a blanket, you can come over and grab one. Super warm, fun colors. Fairbo Mill calls it spread the warmth. For every single blanket the company sells, one is donated. Thank you, thank you. An entirely new business model that was just launched in September. Every night, I get to tuck both of my two boys into bed to put them under a warm blanket and to know that four million kids in this country tonight will not have that same experience. It's enough to break your heart. And as a company that makes blankets, we felt like we were in a unique position to do something about that. 
Several donated blankets recently made their way to Youth Link in Minneapolis, which helps young people find long-term housing. Come on, let's get warm. The gifts were warmly received. This is going to be my new favorite best friend. I'm telling you right now. I'm so grateful. Thank y'all for real. But the blankets provide more than warmth. There's greater meaning. It means that they deserve something. They deserve something new, they deserve something meaningful, and they deserve to be loved and cared for. Ferris Bate has never needed love and care more. The 23-year-old did not have a place to stay when he moved from Georgia. Before you found this place here, did you have a place to stay? No, I don't have no place to stay. So where were you, where were you sleeping? Really, I was sleeping in the car. YouthLink helped him find medical care and a place to live. Though a blanket may seem small, Ferris is grateful. Oh, blanket, oh yeah, they, this was really helpful. The blanket, this is the only thing that we need because it's getting cold. The blanket's something you'll use? Oh yeah, the blanket has really been helpful. You can see my blanket, it's really nice, you know. For Faribault Mill, this 23rd step is not a temporary campaign. It's a permanent mission now woven into the company's fabric. So when we provide this blanket, is it going to solve homelessness? No. But is it going to provide comfort and warmth to a kid in need? The answer is yes. And we've been doing that for 157 years. We hope to be doing that for another 157 years from here on out. We're back on this boost with a once-in-a-lifetime NFL experience. Chanel Jones took a trip to Philly to catch up with the Eagles legendary radio team and see how they use their voices to amplify every jaw-dropping catch, touchdown, and more. It's one of the most important parts of a football game. We're not talking about the players or the coaches. The kick is... Go! We're talking about the commentators that amplify every jaw-dropping catch, heartbreaking moment, and historic touchdown. He's going to run. He's in! Touchdown! And one of the best-known commentating duos in the NFL is here in Philadelphia. Merrill Reese and Mike Quick lead the Eagles radio team. You are the longest serving current play-by-play -play caller in the league. Tell me, what keeps you doing this year after year? I love it. I love it. There's nothing in the world I would rather do than be out here broadcasting NFL football and especially the Eagles. Broadcasting with Merrill for 25 years now, Mike was a five-time Pro Bowler with the Eagles. Mike, how natural was it for you to go from playing football to being in the announcer's booth? I know the game, so that helped a whole lot, but it wasn't a natural thing. I think the, one of the toughest things for me was, and still is, is to criticize players. Mm -hmm. And I have to try and do it gingerly because I know what they go through. Merrill and Mike are so beloved in Philly, there's even a beer named after them. And everyone does a Merrill Reese impression, sometimes better than the man himself. They had on the radio show, they had this segment where people were calling in to imitate Merrill Reese, to try and do the best Merrill Reese. And actually, he called in. I, I called and, in. And he didn't win. No way. <laughs> I finished third. <laughs> I, I said I was Joe from Havertown. 
But impressions are one thing. Actually, putting in the work is another. I think they just think, oh, you guys could do this with your eyes closed. <laughs> well, it, it's a little bit different. I mean, there are hours and hours and hours of preparation. It's so chaotic in the booth, but we have to make sure that it's seamless. It comes out like two guys just sitting talking football. He steps up his head and falls forward. He fumbled and he fumbles the football and the Eagles have it. For some, Merrill's description of the game is more than just a broadcaster's flourish. It's how they visualize football altogether. I received a, a, a very, very nice award from the Association of the Blind. I've had people say, you taught me football. Wow. Because I've never, I was born without sight. And when I hear that, it almost makes me want to oh. cry and it means yeah. so much. After hearing all about the broadcast, I had to get a tour of the booth where it all happens. That's beautiful. Yeah. So what's the first thing you do when you come in? I look down on the field and I go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 midfield, 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Just to loosen up my lips. <laughs> While in the booth, I got to meet Bill Werndell, Merrill's spotter, who makes sure he doesn't miss a thing happening down on the field. These pins represent who's in the game. If a play develops, say, a Hargrave forces a fumble on Aaron Jones, I'll go, this guy forced the fumble, this guy recovers the fumble. You cannot become a fan. You have to concentrate every down. Is that the key? Absolutely. And during the games, Philadelphia sports legend Howard Eskin adds in commentary from the sidelines. I'm their eyes on the field. Sometimes I can hear the coach talk to the officials. And the officials are getting reamed out sometimes. And I'm trying to find out what the problem is that the coach thinks that they screwed up. Before wrapping up my visit with the Eagles radio team, I did have one request for Merrill. So, you know, it's everybody's dream to hear you say their name because you've got the voice. Okay. I'll never play football. This might be the closest I'll ever How do you want me to say it? I had an idea. The crowd is on speaker. <laughs> now coming out of the tunnel, the MVP <laughs> from Wichita, Kansas, and Northwestern University, Janelle Jones. From the Eagles to the Vikings, Peter Alexander got an inside look at how the NFL's team in Minnesota is dazzling fans and gaining new ones before opening kickoff with their incredible pregame experience. Want to see the most electric pregame in pro sports? Head north. The Minnesota Vikings are dazzling fans. Oh, the skull chant and the Gallahorn, there is no better. And gaining new ones. The electricity in the stadium is uh, absolutely amazing. I see it on TV all the time from San Diego. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Even before the opening kickoff. It's the best, and I go to away games too, and there is nothing better than this place. Oh! We headed to Minneapolis to get an inside look at the pregame that was just named the best overall production in all of American sports. We want it to be an incredible experience, not just a football game, but a full experience the whole time we're here. The most obvious of those is this, 18 feet taken straight from Norse mythology, the Gallerhorn. The Gallerhorn is a horn that the Vikings sounded to start a battle, so we thought that it fit really well. This one is sounded by special guests. Like Hall of Famer John Randall. You sounded the yaller horn at the first home playoff game for the Vikings in the new stadium. That moment when you get behind it, what were you thinking? Unbelievable. It gets the crowd roaring. It gets everybody in the right frame of mind. And it's just such an exciting feeling. Even louder is the massive carved drum pounded by a member of the team's Skull Army. When it's the stadium doing the Skull Chant, and we got this drum rocking and this place is going, it's, it's quite incredible to be a, a part of this. And then there's the chant, 66,000 strong. Skull, which basically means cheers in Scandinavian countries, has been a part of Vikings fan culture for decades but it got new intensity once the team paired it with a popular cheer from European soccer. Everybody talked about it, it kind of went viral, and we got 100 emails from fans 
asking us, like, you've got to do this. The Vikings got the blessing of Iceland's team captain to adopt it. And a new Viking war cry was born. Sports is a, is a communal experience, right? And you, ha you feel something when you're, when you're here in, in stadium for the snow and for the horn and the skull chant, all part of it. That adds to the home field advantage. And the icing on the cake, 55 fake snow machines providing some Minnesota atmosphere even inside their dome. And then the art form is making sure you hit as many people as you can. Local pride has never sounded louder. the boost our next story celebrates the life-saving work at st jude children's research hospital two families have something extra special to be thankful for this holiday season carrie sanders has the story how do you feel <laughs> sparrow chloe is a pint-sized ball of energy sparrow show me with your fingers how old are you how old are you big girl how many is that one two three adorable a delightful little girl who at only 10 months was changing in ways that only a mother would pick up on. But I started to suspect something was wrong. She had just stopped trying to crawl. She had become super clingy to me. She wouldn't go to her dad. She wouldn't go to her grandmother. She wouldn't play with her brother. And she would just be always just kind of wanting to cuddle. Insistent something was off, Abriana, a self-described helicopter mom, took her daughter to doctor after doctor after doctor, five in all, who each said the bulging eyes, Sparrow's lethargy, it's probably just allergies. When they said it was allergies, I just felt like that was not the gist of it. That was not the sum of what was wrong with her. I knew that it was something more. Her intuition was right. Tests at a local hospital then confirmed little Sparrow had cancer. It was gut wrenching when it finally sank in. And I mean, it was just moments after the doctor came in and said, we suspect this leukemia. You guys are going to St. Jude the day after tomorrow. When St. Jude first opened its doors, Sparrow would have had a 4% chance at survival. But today, 94% of children at St. Jude survive this type of leukemia. You love me. But the journey you is never easy. And for every family facing leukemia, it's all consuming, as the Owens family also discovered. Brecken, Shadow Owens, he uh, is four. <laughs> And then this is Belle, Catherine Owens, and she's, two. and she's two. 
When Breck was just under two years old, he was diagnosed with the same type of leukemia as Sparrow. Just 48 hours before, we just thought it was a fever, and now you're using the word cancer to our little boy. It was overwhelming. We had no idea what the outcome would be. We were scared. Of scared and hurting. There's no pain like kid pain, whether it's a, a scrape on his knee or, or a fever or, or cancer. It's just a gut-wrenching feeling when you can't make it better. For Sparrow and Breck, doctors prescribed chemo. For Sparrow, it lasted two years. For Breck, two and a half years. For both, it recently ended, which makes this Thanksgiving ever so meaningful. What do you want to be when you grow up? A superhero doctor chef. I think you already are a superhero. To the doctors and to the staff at St. Jude, the Clough family would like to thank you for the part that you've played in saving our daughter's life. We're truly appreciative. There's not anything that we can do to repay them for giving us our son. Just looking at him, they gave us more than they'll ever even realize. And we are just so grateful this Thanksgiving. From the day children arrive at St. Jude, there's a single goal, the celebratory no more chemo party. But because of COVID, it wasn't the normal celebration. It was different. It's been two and a half years. It's been such a long journey that you yearn for that celebration, just to watch the confetti go down. And to not have that um, is heartbreaking. You're on the goal line, walking in, and then we can't celebrate it together. COVID stole the celebration, but with the help of Marlo Thomas. Congratulations, wow. And the staff at St. Jude were making up for it this Thanksgiving. Pack up your bags, get out the door, you don't get chemo anymore. For today, Kerry Sanders, NBC News. Oh, oh, yeah. And now the National Outreach Director for St. Jude, Marlo Thomas, joins us. Marlo, um, that song that we just heard there, that No More Chemo song, uh, that, that has a, a special place in your heart. It certainly does. You know, the first time I went to my uh, to St. Jude a after my father had died, and I was kind of afraid to go inside because I was I thought I'd be overwhelmed by all the memories of the times I've been there mm -hmm. with him. So I kind of just sat in the car and cried a little bit. And then finally, I pulled myself together and mm. I went inside and there was this party going on. These little kids in paper hats and balloons and confetti and a cake and ice cream. And I asked the nurse, whose birthday is it? And she said, oh, is that a birthday party? It's an off chemo party. Wow. Uh, I really lost it. I, <laughs> these tears came down my face and I thought, you know, my father's spirit is alive That's and well so here. You know, and I knew that I had to be a part of it. It was a real defining moment for me. Mm. When we talk about treatment, and I'm sitting here trying not to cry, I lost a childhood friend to leukemia when I was young, more than 20 years ago. And I think about, you know, if she were alive now, right? And you think about the success rate. I mean, for most common childhood leukemia, I think it's 94% now, right? You think it'll ever reach 100%? You know, it will, because we'll go after it just the way we got through the, to the 94%. Now to an Iron Man who's shown incredible strength, resilience, and grit after a truly unimaginable loss. Peter Alexander is back with that story. When you're training, who are you thinking about? Jillian and Lindsay, always. My training is really my time to r remember the happy times. And there were so many happy times, Jillian and Lindsay, not just Zach's sisters, but his best friends. Jillian, she was adventurous, spunky, soulful, but also had this silly, goofy side to her. Lindsay is the epitome of love, would walk into a room and light it up. Just over a year ago, Zach and his family were all together enjoying a summer vacation at a rental home when their world was shattered. In the middle of the night, woke up and uh, the house was on fire. My parents made it out. I made it out of the window in my bedroom, but Jillian and Lindsay didn't make it out. They were just 21 and 19. Is there even a way to describe that level of grief, losing your two sisters? I mean, it is a pain and sadness that is more intense than anything I've ever felt. They were my people, you know, they're the ones that 
I did life with. Life without them was unimaginable, as Zach describes it simply putting one foot in front of the other felt impossible. But as time passed, Zach knew to heal, he needed to honor his sisters. How can I do something today that they'd be happy about? I had started to look towards fitness. But fitness alone was not enough. Zach set his sights on completing one of the greatest challenges in sports, the Ironman, a more than two mile swim, 112 mile bike ride with a marathon to cap it off. Did people say you're nuts or did they say that's brilliant? I, I got a little of both. What, what's your, your personal best in the marathon? I was like, the, I haven't done one of those. So uh, big cyclist, right? I was like, no. Okay, so college swimmer. Yeah, like, no, I don't really know how to swim. Zach teamed up with a coach and spent the next year focused on a Saturday in September, the date of the Ironman Maryland, also his 25th birthday. I'm running this race in honor of Jillian and Lindsay. Go get it! Go get it! His motivation, their voices. This video, a graduation gift from his sisters that he now cherishes. I have a six minute video of Jillian and Lindsay being themselves on my phone and telling me how much they love me, how proud they are of me. You're our role model and our best friend, and we love you so much, and we're so, so, so proud of you. That's gonna stay in my heart uh, and be what I'm thinking of the, the entire race. I cannot be more proud to call you my brother. I love you so, so much. And cheering him on, family and friends, all decked out in pink, Lindsay's favorite color. 11 hours later, exhaustion and exhilaration. For Zach, more than a race, but a moment to remember. Boost. We've got one more story for you, and this one will leave you with a smile. An adorable little girl in Scotland who might have a little work to do when it comes to identifying colors. What color is that? Purple. Is it blue? Yeah. Good girl. And what color is that? Purple. Yellow? Yellow. Mm -hmm. And that one? Purple. Is it red? Red. Good girl. What was that one? Purple. <laughs> Wait. Uh, pretty soon she's going to be right. Purple is yeah. coming. Uh, I think if she keeps guessing, she's going to be right on. By the way, I love how she's, I don't care what she says, just keeps speaking. That's it for today. We hope we we're able to start your day off with a little positivity and a big old smile. We'll see you tomorrow with more of The Boost right here on Today All Day. Do you ever just look around and say, I can't believe we did this? Yes, totally. That was like the light bulb moment. I got up there and I just said I quit my job and started this company.
and I just kept going. It was a lot of testing and learning. There's been a lot of tears along the way. We can actually change the world. When did you have the moment, I made it, I did it? Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of She Made It, where we highlight some amazing female founders who are shaking up their industries and turning their light bulb ideas into reality. For this half hour, I'll be telling you all about some of my favorite brands to help you look and feel your best, whether it's a cozy blanket to help us unwind or a unique way for gifting to those you love. We have got you covered. Plus, I'll reveal my She Made It It list featuring Four small businesses you'll want to shop, all from dynamic women you'll want to support. So, let's get started. First up, I want to introduce you to Birdie Lashes, founder Yasmin Maya, an influencer who went from doing makeup tutorials to launching her own beauty brand. And she has overcome some incredible challenges on her path to success. Take a look. Influencer Yasmin Maya has over 3 million followers glued to her makeup and hair tutorials. Hey my beauties, welcome back to my channel. Bienvenidas de nuevo a mi canal, yo soy... At 30 years old, the wife and mom with baby number two on the way. Aww, Aww, baby bump. <laughs> is also behind Birdie Lashes, the brand she officially launched last December with foam mink lashes and eyeliner that doubles as adhesive. What makes your lashes so easy because I know a lot of people are like, okay, it's another lash and I can't ever put them on myself. Our lashes are vegan, cruelty-free. They're super ultra soft and they're very light. So you're not gonna feel them heavy. You just pop it right on top of the eyeliner and it will stay. How proud are you of yourself? I look back and it's unbelievable. Hi guys. Okay, welcome to my channel. Nine years ago, Yasmin started her YouTube channel, Beauty Bird. She was living alone and in limbo, not in the Southern California town where she was raised, but in her birth country. I'm going actually through a really hard time right now. Walk us through what your childhood was like and what you went through. I was born in Mexico, very poor, like almost homeless. I didn't move here to the United States until I was like a year and three months. I grew up thinking I was part of this country and it wasn't until I got to high school when my mom got deported that it hit me with the reality that I am actually an illegal immigrant. Yasmin's father, also not a U.S. citizen, was deported shortly after her graduation. I started realizing I'm not going to be able to apply for a job or even go to college and get scholarships. I was in fear of deportation. Then at 18, Yasmin boldly left the only place she had called home bound for Tijuana, hoping to find work until she could return without worry. It's not a life, honestly, to just live in fear. My boyfriend went after me and we ended up getting married. But her husband had to patiently wait for her in the States. Even her parents had legally returned to this side of the border. Yasmin was on her own for three years, waiting on her green card. Well, every day I would cry. <laughs> So how did you overcome that? I started watching YouTube videos, girls doing makeup, and my mom was like, why don't you give it a try? And I was like, you know what, you're right, I have nothing to lose. Short on cash, Yasmin receives a camera and cosmetics from her mother. But then, she accidentally burned off her lashes while heating hot water for the shower. My little tiny eyelashes. I was so sad, and it was like, no, I'm not gonna give up. I went out and bought my first false lashes. Is that incredible? Yeah. Finally, reuniting with her family in May of 2013, she continued to post and rake in ads and sponsorships, and a new dream emerged. I started seeing more and more people saying, I unfortunately don't know how to apply lashes. She decided to develop an affordable false lash line for every eye shape. Whatever fiesta that you can think of, this is for you. Today, with close to 80,000 units of lashes sold and a multi-million dollar portfolio across all of her businesses, Yasmin feels her success as a Mexican Latina immigrant is especially poignant at this time. What I try to do is use my voice for other people that feel like they need to be quiet or ashamed of like where they're coming from. And so I take this month very serious to try and use it to our advantage and just be heard. Any dream is possible.
We have some samples here. They're so easy to use. And after our She Made It segment, Yasmin told us that Birdie Lashes saw an incredible boost in sales and website engagement. Most recently, the brand launched their Wing It Mascara. It's their first ever mascara with a custom dual tip, and it's waterproof, too. We all love that. Yay, Birdie Lashes. All right, I love this next one, too. Katherine Hamm is an entrepreneur who built her Barabee business based on comfort, and today she's turned her homemade weighted blankets into a multi-million dollar brand. Growing up in Germany, it was normal to nap during the afternoon. And then once I moved here to the US, I realized that actually nobody is napping. I think it's almost frowned upon. Feel like you need a nap? Well, Catherine Ham has you covered. I mean, no one has a master's in blankets. So what was your <laughs> background? I used to be an economist at the World Bank. With the constant traveling, I just felt exhausted, not being able to sleep, waking up multiple times at night. It just really affects you and it affects your day. Back in 2016, Catherine researched products to help her sleep and came across weighted blankets. It was just a complete game changer for me. I slept like never before. The only problem I had with this blanket that it just made me really hot. It was filled with all these plastic beads, so it was noisy and I just realized there was no way that I could sleep under that blanket for an entire night. After getting nearly 50 no's from potential manufacturers, Catherine took matters into her own hands, enlisting her mom to knit her first prototype out of their garage. The blanket was heavy, it looked beautiful, and it felt cozy, calming, and most importantly, it didn't make me hot. So that's when I realized that we had created something really special. She called the business Barabi, a combination of the words bear hug and lullaby. Barabi officially launched online in December 2018 and sold out in two weeks. What was the turning point? Because you turned this into a multi-million dollar business. One morning I woke up and I had an email from West Elm in my inbox and they wanted to see our blankets and come to our New York showroom. And I mean, I almost broke down laughing because we didn't have a showroom at that time. We were just- Right, so, you're like, come to my garage and see my mother and I. I think I did what any entrepreneur would do at this stage. So how about we come to your place? So we borrowed a hotel trolley and we pushed the whole trolley with 300 pounds of blankets down the street to West Elm and they immediately loved them and they were ready to order. Baraby made over $21 million in revenue in 2020 and recently had a cameo in an iconic TV show. So we just launched in Nordstrom's Countrywide and if you happen to watch Sex in the City, you might have spotted our blankets on set. Yeah, we've been growing from two people. Wait, 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 uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just really like <laughs> blew over that. Tell us the scene, tell us how that happened. Cynthia Nixon has a blanket and she was directing that scene. So it's like a pinch wow. me moment because I'm a huge fan. And as CEO, Catherine is trying to create a dreamy office environment for Barabee's workforce. We work from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And outside of these co-working hours, everyone can be flexible. Some people like to nap, some people like to walk their dogs, and other people like to spend time with their children. I assume that your employees respond well to that, just saying, if you get your work done whenever you can get it done, I want to encourage you to feel rested and healthy and inspire wellness. We don't have to earn rest. We actually need rest. I think it's a, it's it works wonders just to put 20 minutes on the calendar for a nap. For someone sitting at home who has an idea like this and who's not in the field they want to be in or has an idea about something that doesn't exist, what would be your best advice? Every business starts with an idea and it's more about the courage to take the first step doesn't that just make you want to curl up and take a good nap? Well, since Barabee's launch, the company has grown more than 5,000%. And in the spirit of Barabee's mission to create a calmer, more comforted world, this past spring, Barabee launched the Hug It, a sensory knot pillow that provides stylish, 
stress relief. We could all use that. Okay, but don't go to sleep just yet because there's much more to come. Next, supermodel turned mogul Winnie Harlow shares her personal story of building her skincare line, plus how one woman is reinventing the ear piercing experience. We'll be right back. Welcome back to She Made It. Winnie Harlow is a groundbreaking supermodel in her own right. Here's a look how one of the biggest names in fashion took her talents from the runway to the sun care aisle. Take a look. I've been able to showcase everyone else's work, the things that they've labored on, and now I get to do the same for myself. It's a dream come true. For years, Winnie Harlow has been blazing a trail in the fashion industry, but now she's making strides in business as well. After everything you've been through, and I know this goes back to childhood, how important is that title for you, entrepreneur? My mom is a hairdresser and she had her own salon. My dad is a mechanic in Jamaica and still runs his own shop. I was thinking, where do I get this from? And I was just like, wait, it's in my blood, you know? It, it's from my parents. As a child, Winnie was diagnosed with the skin condition, vitiligo. It's hard enough being a kid to begin with, but right. kids were so mean and saying names to you. Tell me about your childhood. When you're in a small town, especially as a young kid, it feels like that is the end all and be all. It seems like the end of the world, but it's really just the beginning of your life. After competing on America's Next Top Model, Winnie started making a name for herself on high fashion runways and at photo shoots for big brands. Walking Victoria's Secret was incredible for me, life-changing. A lot of people don't know this, but I did try out for Victoria's Secret the year before and I didn't get it. And so getting it the second time was amazing. Like any Vogue cover I'm on, I'm the first model with vitiligo to be on that cover. So that is mind blowing to me because I had never seen myself represented growing up. Winnie says in 2018, an incident on a set inspired her to take action. I had this horrible experience on set at a shoot where no one wanted me to apply sunscreen. It made my, my skin look purple and gray and it wasn't great for the photo shoot. So, you know, I went without to get the best shots, but after two days of shooting from sun up to sun down in the Bahamas, I was burnt to a crisp. I was like in so much pain. I had to have doctors give me injections for, for pain, for inflammation. And I realized that there wasn't sun care on the market that made you look gorgeous and also be well protected. Winnie got to work developing skincare products. I think people think you're a supermodel, things just, you know, you just, you get a line and it doesn't work like that. I had no idea where to start. I had the idea, like it's my brainchild, but I had no business savvy. I think some of the most challenging things for me were one, hearing all those no's when we were, when we started fundraising, especially being a business that was created in a pandemic where things were already being pushed back with packaging and the formulas and like our factories shutting down for COVID. And, you know, there were so many steps back every time we were taking steps forward. 
Nearly three years later, Winnie raised $6.5 million from investors to launch K-Skin, a sun care line inspired by the beaches of her family's native Jamaica. I wanted to put things that I've used since I was a kid going to Jamaica and staying with my dad. They used to cut the aloe vera plant and rub it directly onto our skin for like mosquito bites or sunburns. We also have hydrating nectar, which is from different fruits and botanicals. Winnie hopes to inspire people to take care of and to love the skin they're in. What would you say as advice to young girls out there who are going through a tough time, who just like want to get through it and pursue her dream? I would say focus on yourself. There's only two things that you can really do in life. You can change things and those things that you can't change, you got to move forward. Well, after we talked to Winnie for She Made It, the K-Skin team told us that K-Skin sales more than doubled. They've also expanded the line to include non-SPF lip and body care products, just the perfect pampering we need for fall and winter. Congratulations, Winnie. Great, great girl. Well, next up, a woman who is shaking up the piercing business. Rowan founder Louisa Schneider made it a point to create safe, hygienic, and fun piercing experiences for first-timers and those looking to get in on the ear party trend. Do your work, do your research, and don't let anyone make you feel like your idea is small. Because if you're passionate about it and you know that it resonates with other people, you were probably onto something. For entrepreneur Louisa Schneider, First-time ear piercing should not look like this scene from the hit movie Grease. Yeah. Oh! Oh. And I desperately wanted an option that I knew would be safe, but that would also be joyful. And so that was really when I started thinking about why didn't that concept exist already? Louisa launched Rowan in 2018, a company looking to turn this sometimes ignored rite of passage into an experience worthy of a special celebration. To me, as a mom and as a woman, it was so clear that ear piercing is a milestone. And I was amazed that it had not been really modernized. So tell me how this idea started. I knew that even though malls were really suffering, one concept that continued to drive foot traffic was mall-based piercers. And around the time that my daughter was born, I took my nieces to get their ears pierced. And it wasn't a great experience. <laughs> The concept was pretty crowded and cluttered and tired. And I realized at that time that I would never take my daughter there. That's when Louisa started Rowan, a concierge ear piercing and subscription box service where customers could book a licensed nurse to perform piercings in the comfort of their own home. What was your first step? We started with a small proof of concept. So two nurses that were able to do a number of house calls and for us at Rowan, one of the most important things is thinking about the full experience. You may end up with an infection and that is something that we want to avoid. The business quickly grew. Louisa then opened Rowan's first piercing studio in New York City, coincidentally just half a block away from a big box store that would play a major part in the next step of their journey. I got reached out to on LinkedIn and the person who was reaching out to me had a target address. And I did not think it was real. So I actually ignored it for a few weeks. And then there was another persistent outreach. And I thought, well, there is a chance this is real. So I'm going to take the call. Target offered Rowan the opportunity to open full service piercing studios in stores across California. I love it. But the pandemic brought on new challenges for the company. The thought of having an intimate moment, piercing an ear during COVID was really uncertain. But as people became more knowledgeable about COVID and about safety protocol, there was this imprint of wanting a sterile environment. Rowan nurses are now in more than 200 target locations across the country. They've also opened a second standalone piercing studio, this time in Connecticut, and pierce as many as 20,000 ears a month. What do you think getting your ears pierced energetically represents? We say at Rowan, every piercing is a milestone and every milestone can be celebrated with a piercing. It's really a liberating form of self-expression. So doing it safely and having fun is really, you know, what it's all about. After our She Made It show, Rowan tells us they've since opened up 
nine studios across the country. And this month they are opening a location in Charlotte, North Carolina, and their very first mall location at the Mall of America. And it doesn't stop there. Chicago, Boston, and Miami, look out for a Rowan coming to you. I love hearing that. Well, up next, hear about women who made their dreams a reality from a female founder who is taking gifting to a whole new level and to a woman who's showing us that her business is on a roll. That's all coming up next. Welcome back to our She Made It special focused on pampering and getting ready for the holidays. You're about to meet the entrepreneurs behind innovative companies who are helping us make our lives a little bit easier. First up, Toki founder Jane Park, who is putting a creative spin on gift giving. Take a look. My parents and I immigrated from Korea when I was four. We lived above their convenience store and I did my homework behind the cash register. I loved having a front row seat to their courage and resilience. Even though I went to law school, my passion for New Horizons pulled me into entrepreneurship. I took a leap to start my first business, a beauty tech startup, in 2007. I raised millions of dollars and sold it for even more. A few years ago at Christmas, I was throwing out bags and bags of used gift wrap because most of it wasn't recyclable. I thought about how my Korean grandmother would wrap gifts in squares of cloth, which we saved to reuse again and again. So I got to work reinventing gift wrap to make it more sustainable with the digital twist by inventing a QR gift tag, which allows you to show up with your gift by uploading a photo or video. Toki means rabbit in Korean. And my hope is that our products will hop from friend to friend and celebration to celebration. Well, since our She Made It segment, Toki is now nationwide. And check this out. This summer, they just launched their latest product line, the Toki Eco Gifting Set. This line uses recycled water bottles to further reduce our emissions. And guess what? With every order of their Eco Gifting Set, Toki is giving viewers free additional bags, all with free shipping. Well, moving on to brand number two now, that's actually the name. Number two, founded by a woman who is wiping away the competition while saving the planet at the same time. Take a look. My name is Samira Farr, and to me, true luxury is living in a land plush with trees rather than cutting them down to make toilet paper. That's why I created Number Two, a stylish toilet paper that not only gives you a clean wipe, but also helps preserve our forests. In 2017, after selling my first business, I began to research the toilet paper industry. 
It felt outdated. I was shocked to find that TV can be made from alternative fibers like bamboo, and that there aren't a lot of brands that don't use plastic packaging. I also learned that bamboo can grow at a much faster rate than trees, making it a way more eco-friendly option. I launched number two toilet paper in 2019 and have grown from selling only online to selling from bigger home goods stores like Urban Outfitters and Lowe's Home Improvement. Customers love the strength and quality of the teepee, as well as the stylish patterns. But most importantly, they are thrilled to be saving the planet one wipe at a time. Love this. Well, number two is now introducing 100% bamboo paper towels and facial tissue. And they have exciting news. Early next year, number two is now becoming Rizzy Home and will continue to expand its line of home goods. Congratulations to them. I use this and just love the packaging. How else can you give toilet paper as a gift? Well, there's still much more to come. Up next, it's our She Made It It list for women-owned small businesses that will help you feel your best this season. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I have even more extraordinary female founded brands that I'm so excited to share with you on my She Made It It list. Brand number one, Dogwood Hill. In 2014, founder Jennifer Hunt saw a gap in the market for online art-driven holiday cards, so she did something about it. Jennifer's mission was to create a website where customers could go for personalized cards that eliminated the lengthy design times and pricey design fees. So. Dogwood Hill was born. With its collective of over 30 artists, Dogwood Hill is able to supply products within 10 days that are unique and personalized for you and your families. What a great way to wrap a gift and beautiful quality. All right, brand number two, Clean Circle. Lena Chow launched her skincare reusable products that replace single-use makeup wipes and cotton rounds. As the first-generation daughter whose mom worked as a seamstress, Lena knew the ins and outs of the textile industry and set out to create beauty reusables with certified clean fabrics. Clean Circle's mission is to reduce beauty waste all while protecting your skin from environmental stressors. These are great. Brand three, Palermo Body. Jessica Morelli is the founder and formulator of the skincare line that is all about nourishing the skin and stimulating the mind. At an early age, Jessica was inspired by the natural skincare practices of her Sicilian grandmother. Their revitalizing body scrub has become a favorite among customers, and just recently, Palermo Body launched their breast cancer initiative, donating $5 of every purchase of the scrub to breast cancer research. Such an unbelievable cause and really, really great products. All right, last up, Lucky 13 Candles. Lawyer and founder Amina Max started her massage oil candle company in 2019 to connect her with her then fiance and now husband. Guess it worked. So she taught herself how to make candles that turn into massage oils with all natural ingredients. Amina reports that the connection with her husband is stronger than ever, and Lucky 13 Candles will be getting into retail stores 
early next year. Just love this. Well, that's all for our She Made It today. Thanks so much for watching. And remember to shop these small businesses, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen, or head over to today.com slash shop. I'm Joel Martin. I'm so excited you watched the show. Such great entrepreneurs. And we'll see you next time. And welcome back this morning. We are rounding out Restaurant Week on today with famed celebrity chef, restaurateur, television host, and all-around great guy. Of course, he also happens to be the mayor of Flavortown. The mayor of Flavortown. That's right. Uh, He is up early for us in Santa Rosa, California, alongside his son, the deputy mayor of Flavortown, (laughs) uh, Hunter Fieri, also there. Good to see you both. Thanks so much. for. (laughs) Hey, God, before we start cooking, I, I think folks should know, Last year, you raised, I believe, about $21 million uh, for, for employees of the restaurant industry, the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund last year. First of all, kudos to you. But secondly, do you think we're at a point where some restaurants are starting to get back on their feet? Well, I, one, thank you for recognizing that. And there were so many great people that were involved in raising that money. We got almost to $25 million. Uh, the money kept wow. trickling in there at the end. But the National Restaurant Association was amazing in, in helping that happen. Uh, we gave out 43,000 grants, by the way, Al. But I'll tell you, um, yeah, the restaurant business is we're coming back. We're coming back a little bit different. You know, people are learning a lot more about to go, a lot more about delivery. Um, they're learning to, uh, you know, they're kind of learning how their restaurants are able to work. The, the dining in is, is still a really difficult part. And dining out can't happen all over the country, especially because of weather. But uh, restaurants are coming back. We're resilient. I mean, this yeah. is this is what we do in this industry. Hmm. Your new season of Tournament of Champions helps local restaurants. Can you tell us about the impact of that? Well, okay. So Tournament of Champions, in, I, listen, I've done so many different types of shows on the Food Network, and this is really one of my favorites. I designed this about three or four years ago with my buddy Brian Lando. And you know what we said is we want to make a competition that can never be duplicated. Mm-hmm. This randomizer that you see spinning right there, that gives a different protein, a different vegetable, uh, a different piece of equipment, different style of food, and different time for each competition. And these chefs are really put under the – I mean, they're put under the gun. I, I've never seen anything this hard. I mean, and, and I think Iron Chef and all the competitions that have happened before this, uh, but this one right here really puts them to the test. And uh, the new season starts this Sunday on, on the 7th. And wait till you see the chefs and wait till you see what they do. Blow your mind. All right, let's get to this burger. I see you're about to flip it. What is, what is, <laughs> what is Hunter making over there? What is he stirring up? Well, Hunter's over here working on uh, making a lot of something. Uh, Hunter's, making, <laughs> Hunter's making the famous donkey sauce. And we use this by the gallon, of course. No, I don't know why we're making this much. But it's got roasted garlic. It's got a little bit of Worcestershire, mustard, a little salt, a little pepper, a um, little mayonnaise. This really is good. This is our signature burger that we do at Flavortown Kitchen. We do it at all the Guy Fieri restaurants. And, of course, we love to make for you guys at 5 a.m. in California. Um, <laughs> but you're, adding mac, you're ma- adding mac and cheese to this guy? So the ma- so we've got some macaroni that's done here going into the cheese sauce that we made. We call it Super, super Melted Cheese, SMC. Mm. Okay, so we'll take this mac and cheese into that. Hunter will go ahead and... Bring me a couple pieces oh, like of so cheddar more, cheese. Yeah. It's more yeah. cheese than mac, right, Mr. Mayor? Well, what and we like cheese. to do is, is really accentuate wow. the cheese side of things, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. We'll throw the uh, dome on top of that, a little water. You want to hit me with a bun, Hunter? Wow. I don't know if you can see us. Through. These are yeah. special effects, oh. by the way, you guys. This is really us at it's home. A deep oh, I thought he was going to actually hit you with a bun. No, he would. Trust me. Don't, don't, don't start. He'll get into this. He, I made him get up early. He wasn't super thrilled about that idea. All right. So we get a little bit of that. Hunter's toasting the bun. He'll hit it with a little of the uh, donkey sauce. But yeah, so Tournament of Champions is happening. And I'll tell you, we're coming back. We've been shooting a lot of guys grocery games, what we call guys grocery games delivery that we shoot here in this kitchen at our house. And we've also been doing a lot of, uh, of Triple D takeout. So we couldn't go to, a, to our favorite Triple D restaurant because everybody was closed. But the restaurants were still operating with their delivery and their to-go. So we said, hey, why not send us some of those new dishes that you guys are doing, and we'll highlight them. So we started mm-hmm. to highlight these. Uh, Hunter, I think we shot probably 30 shows during oh, the pandemic. Yeah. And that was awesome. Kept the, the TV crew working, That's kept awesome. the restaurants going, and hopefully kept people I'm worried about the burger. Is it going to burn? No. Oh, yeah, no. The master of this. Does that look burnt? Get in and take no. a shot of that burger. That it is real good. Can you do that on a grill, right guy? 
That is impressive. This is on a plancha, so just basically like a flat cast iron skillet. Hunter's got pickles, tomatoes, and onions down right here. Donkey and like sauce. I said, this isn't a signature burger that we do mm. at all the Guy Fieri restaurants. We'll hit a couple pieces of bacon uh, on yeah. top of that. Hunter will hit a wow. little bit of lettuce so on good. top of that. Let's get some so onion good. straws. <laughs> of course. Yeah, a little touch of vinegar. If you were in the studio right now, I would take a bite of that giant burger and embarrass okay. myself on national television. Let, yeah. Hey, I'm going to send you this burger. That's <laughs> what you need to be thinking about. Yeah. I, think like, that. I pay a hundred bucks to see you take a bite of that. Box. That's that a beautiful his face burger. Looks so good. Guy, yes. Yes. honestly, almost 25 million. You've done so much for your own industry. So, I mean, Craig said it. God bless you for that. Hunter, go back to bed. I mean, don't even. <laughs> no, no. You can't say goodbye to Hunter. Why? You. Take a Tell bite. Tell me where you want me to send this. <laughs> I want, I want to take Rockefeller a bite. Plaza. Okay, so you yeah. take a bite, guy. <laughs> all right, all right. Somebody just said that they were going to give thousands of dollars to, to the program if we, if we cool. take a bite. That? So, Hunter's back on the fourth. You know, this is breaking. Oh, this is the breaking okay. the breakfast of champion routine. There you go. This is all for you, Al. All right. I know Yum. you appreciate Here we go. this. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, watch the technique. We're living through you, right? There we go. That's how they're back. About. And for the recipe there, you can check it out. Head to today.com slash food. Thank you, boys. We'll see you in a couple hours. Thanks, guys. This morning on Today Food, dinner and a dash. We're talking weeknight meals, ready to eat in less than 30 minutes. 30 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. Valerie Bertinelli, two mm -hmm. words for you. Hamburger helper. Yeah. I haven't had hamburger helper in like 25 years. It, it's ridiculously easy to do. It's that one of those comfort foods that just stick to your gut. It's oh, that you guys are already enjoying it. So and I'll show you how easy it is. Literally, you just get the ground beef ground okay. up and, and nice and browned. Add in the spices. We got a little bit of salt. We got a little bit of paprika and uh, mustard and garlic. Okay. Onion powder. And you get could swap out there. the beef, obviously, for turkey. Or, you could absolutely okay. do that. And um, when I get to the... Um, the macaroni. See, I'm just toasting up the spices here right now. Okay. And getting some flavor on there. And then this is an all one pot. I don't like to dirty a lot of dishes mm -hmm. yeah. when I'm cooking in the kitchen on a weeknight. So I'm going to throw all the macaroni into the same pot. Oh, and it's not cooked when you when you throw nope, it in. Nope, not cooked. It's wow. going to cook up. And, and the, all of the starch from the macaroni is going to thicken up the oh. cheese mixture. Oh. So we got some water in there. You got to get some milk in there. A little milk. Oh, so oh, good. That's a milk. Whole milk. Whole milk. Yeah, of course. Yeah, come on. I mean, there's all the cheese and everything else. What are you going to Why, 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 why skip on the milk? The milk? Yeah. It's true. That's a good point. So that all gets uh, heated up, and then it turns into this young, unctuous, lovely, mm. like, oh, there's a bunch of uh, cheddar cheese in there. I got sharp cheddar and regular American cheese. Get, that gets all mixed up, and you can see how thick it gets mm. just from the heat and just um, thickening up from the starch. So you use right two there. kinds of cheese. I use two kinds of cheese. You can use the white cheddar. You can use the, I like to get a little color in there. So that's the cheddar I, I use. I love how you add the American. It adds just a tang that mm -hmm. makes yeah. it much more comforting. Right? I mean, American cheese and burger meat go together. Yeah. So <laughs> they're meant to be together. What are you topping it with? Here? I'm going to top it off with a little bit of onion. Oh. And just get that right over it. Make it look all pretty. Now, you can also um, use... Um, Gluten-free pasta, I made it with gluten-free a few mm -hmm. weeks ago, yeah. and it worked just as well. Sometimes okay. the gluten-free doesn't get um, let off as much starch, right. so you just add a little cornstarch in there, just okay. a tiny bit, and What's that'll What's the verdict, ladies? I mean, delicious. The yummiest. Good. The best. So Good. Delicious. And again, you, this, you say 30 minutes. You could probably do that in like 20. Well, just you need, you're waiting yeah. for the pasta to cook. Yeah. yeah. To get al dente, yeah. that's all it is. And kids mm -hmm. would love it, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's delicious. Good. It's still, I mean, it's so tasty. Kids would love it. And it's easier than the box. All right. Now, you want dessert? Mm -hmm. I do want dessert. Yeah. I always okay. want dessert. So I'm I got some. This is Wolfie's absolute favorite dessert mm. every um, this time of year. It's pumpkin pudding, and All you're right. going to make your own pudding, and you're going to realize right. how easy it is. So we got a little bit of cream in here. We got some pumpkin puree. Always get the pumpkin mm. puree, not the pumpkin pie mixture, oh. because you want to add all your pumpkin own spices. Pie. You want to add Ooh. the ginger and pumpkin the nutmeg pie. and the cinnamon and all the things mm. and all spice that go in here. What are these? Those are ginger snaps, and oh, those are, mm. we're going to layer the pudding with ginger snaps. I'm getting ahead. Get ahead. So yeah. you got, we got our wet ingredients My here. Goodness. We need to separate the eggs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. that's a very soft shell. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I've never yeah. seen you do that on your show. <laughs> you have never done that. <laughs> well, I'm going to get that yolk out anyway. So we're going to separate the eggs from the from the shell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there. So. You know what? Mistakes happen in the kitchen there you go. all the time. Live TV. Yeah. So, you go, oh, wait. First, I got to get the cornstarch in here. Right. Look, I'm all for clumps now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a little bit of salt. Don't ever be afraid of putting salt into your sweets. Mm -hmm. It's going to really just take the flavor that much. Like, it's just, oh, I used the, oh, shoot. <laughs>
I used to whisk I should have saved it for this. this. Okay, so well, you know what? Let me, um, here, here's a, here's a oh, that's not a whisk down there. That's oh, a, we well. can still use Anyway, you mix this up. You're going to mix this up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Get the egg in there. Yeah, you know what? Uh, why not? Why not? Get the egg yolks in there. Mix that all together. Uh -huh. That cornstarch is going to then protect you Thank as you. That's very good. Right? Thank you. I'm very Thank you, impressed. Thank you, Val. Better than me uh, chopping up these <laughs> eggs. <laughs> so then, after we're done here, after you want to temper this now with this hot mixture of the milk and the and the puree and the spices. Oh, it's going to go in the. Oh. And you start tempering this together and mix it together. I'm <laughs> this stop is that. just. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the kitchen. I, I swear it. it's much easier than what I'm making it. <laughs> Thank you, Craig. Then you get. That that all mixed together, and somehow it magically turns into this. <laughs> Go Valerie. <laughs> and you add a little bit of butter at the end to top it off, and a little bit of vanilla when it's cooled yeah. down because you don't want to heat up the vanilla. Yeah. So you were at the New York wine show? That, what was it, the food? Yeah, wine I, I cook for a living. I actually got two Emmys for my show. I'm just saying. saying that's all. Not, there's so a new I, app coming out. <laughs> there's a new app. You can cook along with me on the new app. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to sample it. You know what, though? It turned out great. <laughs> By the way, it's so Valerie. so delicious. By the way, another reason to love Valerie Bertinelli, yeah. don't you think? Oh, oh my gosh, good. I love her. Another. That's good. I love you, Valerie. It's like pumpkin pie. It's it is, better. isn't it? Yeah. Valerie, so thank yeah, you. Ginger You're very welcome, Craig. <laughs> Today.com slash food for the recipes. Today food, we are making a simple and filling summer salad. Yes. Joining us now, one of our favorites, the founder of Fit Cook Meals, Kevin Curry. Cheeseburger is one of my favorite things. I yes. like to eat a salad. Yes. Sounds pretty good together. This How do is, we do it? All right. First off is the sauce because the secret's always in the sauce. Yes. So you're gonna take a, um, you know, like pickles and just dice them up really, really finely. Oh. If you can't do this, just go ahead and buy some relish. You can buy sweet relish okay. or you can buy just the dill relish. Okay. All right. So we're gonna add in some pickles here. Let me type this up just a little bit finer. Yeah. Okay. Nice knife, Add nice that skills to, there. There you go. Add that into the sauce. Now, for the sauce, we're going to use olive oil mayo. It's a little bit lower in fat. Oh. I know, don't, Where do you find No, I just never heard of that. Where do you find olive oil, oil mayo? In the grocery I mean, store. In it's, the, it's, pretty, the mayonnaise. It's, it's really easy. <laughs> All right, and then some Greek yogurt. This is going to boost the protein, but also add that little tanginess in there. Al's, Al's <laughs> heckling me. I know. Well, so I didn't know. I thought mayonnaise was mayonnaise. Did you know, Hoda? There's I, avocado. No there's avocado no base. No. Okay. okay. It's a little lighter. Okay. A little Olive bit. oil mayonnaise. Great. <laughs> Coconut sugar for that sweetness. These things out. Some smoked paprika. Mm -hmm. A little bit of that smokiness. Yes. Onion. And then we've got some vinegar here. Yeah. And then some olive oil. I'm going to have you whisk this. Okay. And oh, then this is just some water. And you're going to just. Add some water until nice. you reach your desired consistency. Okay, I like this. This is also going to be dressing. Now, this is good for burgers and stuff, y'all, but it's also good for salads, mm. like for, a, you know, for the cookout. It's, like the it's, a special, it's, a, it's a today's special sauce. You know I'm I like looking out for y'all. There you go. Thank you. All right. Now, it's a little chunky because I have those pickles in it. Yes, yeah, but okay. you can try them up, you know, like finer too. Yeah. Oh, oh that looks great. Thank you. Perfect, y'all. Good, good, good job. Hey, I know. She's cooking, cooking today. All right. Now, we have got the protein. The protein yes. is super important. So this is some lean beef, but yeah. you can also use turkey, chicken, whatever. You're going to season it up with some garlic. Am and I just some onion. Yeah, throw just put it all it, on yeah, there? Just put it in there. Now, 
really important. Whenever you're cooking up your meat, it I may have some water. Okay, that's that's too. Well, yeah, I we know. Can, I don't know. I was trying. Oh you know what I was thinking? Like sprinkle, oh, and oh, it would be sprinkle. more evenly distributed. Okay, but, that, but that's with the pepper, oh, wow. though. Yeah, just, oh, okay, like the, okay. It, it's okay. Whatever. We got it. We got it. Sorry. Yeah, this is this add all good. Pounds of meat. The most oh. important thing is that if you have a whole bunch of liquid here, you don't yeah. want boiled meat. So just drain your meat, put it back onto the heat, and sear it up some more. Add this in there, sea salt and pepper. Remember, mm -hmm. we gotta do this. This is live television. Make mm -hmm. sure they know we mm -hmm. season our food yeah, exactly, here. Yeah, exactly, because they'll yell at you. Yes, so they, you know they will. <laughs> oh, okay. We did, we did. Sea salt, More pepper, salt. there you go. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Now, for the salad, we're gonna chop up some romaine here. Mm, now, yeah. I like to have mine like pretty finely because I want every single bite to have something in it. Yes. Now, we've got cherry tomatoes. You can have them or, you know, quarter, quarter them. them. Yep, add it to our salad here. Mm -hmm. Now, in goes the beef or yes. your protein. What's a cheeseburger without what? Oh, you gotta have a little cheddar cheese. Add a little cheese, cheese. Oh, there yeah. we go. Some onion action. Why don't nice. you go ahead and toss that together for okay. me? And I'm gonna add in some of our secret sauce. Okay. okay. You just tell me when to say stop. No, I'd say keep on going. That's oh, right. Hey, taste, hey, some guys. more sauce, right? More. Yeah. Do you love that sauce? More. You can yes. use the sauce on a, a slew of things. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can use fish. it on anything. Does it keep like, in the fridge for a couple it days? It keeps in the fridge, no. but it's not going to last long because you're going to eat it. Yeah, so true. Okay. You're going to smear it now. You can have this as a tossed salad, but I love mine in a wrap, y'all, mm -hmm. because you know this mm -hmm. is all about grab and go for the summertime. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little bit more sauce here on yeah. this wrap. Why don't you go ahead? This looks great. Oh, thank you. This is like restaurant quality. I'm, I'm so um, I'm so impressed. Show, I've served before. <laughs> okay. Use these tongs. Uh -huh. and we're gonna put that in there. Okay. Add that to the wrap. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't have a cheeseburger without the sesame seed bun. Oh, this could be a nice lunch for kids, sesame or like seed. even a kid camp lunch. If Absolutely. You, you may want to add too much. Some, I think that's fine. Okay. We're gonna add in some oh. sesame seeds. Oh yeah. We're gonna add in some pickles as well. Love if you it. want some more. All right. Now, do you know how to wrap up a, a wrap? No, we show me. The, okay, show here me we that go. So this is, this is what I, I do. I can swaddle a baby, I'm but this yeah, I don't You got to do this right here, all right? Okay. Now, now, once you do this, you're going to put it to one side. Okay. Oh, hold interesting. It, hold oh, it over. Oh, 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 I never knew that's that. And then, yes, yeah. And then there you go. Oh it my is gosh. wrapped. Wow, wrong. you did that snug now, as a fucking rock. beautiful. Yes. And you know, and you should also think about toasting them, too. You know, so uh -oh. once this is empty, put that back into the skillet, yeah, toast it. Oh, yeah, yeah, get it nice and crispy, toast like restaurant wrap, style. Like just put yes. it in there. Oh, nice. And then toast Delicious all the sides stuff. of it. People are going to be like, yo. I like look that. At that. Today, Food Loves Football to get you ready for the big Sunday night battle here on NBC. Pittsburgh Steelers, L.A. Chargers, here to get us in the spirit with some game day eats. Cookbook author and restaurant owner, Adrian Calvo. Adrian, thank you for being here. Oh Shirley out on the plaza. 
Savannah joins Woo! us. We're going to start with this beautiful Italian sandwich. Yes, an outrageous Italian sandwich. It is outrageous. Maximum flavor style. Lots of flavors. We have here some ciabatta bread, some fresh mozzarella. Yep. Got to use the fresh stuff. Mm. We're going to cut that into about quarter inch pieces. Okay. Now, don't skimp on the fresh stuff. Building yes. ingredients, using great ingredients is, is That the makes secret. a difference. Why do you like the yeah. ciabatta? The chewiness, but the lightness of it as well. But yep. you know, any rustic Italian bread really will do. Mm -hmm. So okay. you get some pesto down? Pesto down on both sides. I need a chainsaw <laughs> for this. And then we're gonna start pressing our meats. Now, I like to use pepperoni, prosciutto, salami, mm. but guess what? You have turkey and ham left over for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Swap that out, okay? Do I, do so, it, do I layer on the cheese the now? Please, layer it here. We have some sliced oh. up as oh, well. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, Adrian, that is that's Isn't that fantastic? fantastic? So we layer Our on eatiness? some peppers, pepperoncini. It should look like this. We press it. it smells so good. With something heavy in the fridge overnight. Oh, the skillet. The skillet goes on like this. Yep. Okay. Is you this have, a Pittsburgh thing? Yes. You oh, have, look at that. Cool. Look at this, guys. <laughs> that's yes. my half, that's Carson's half. Yeah. I like that. This is I like delicious. That. <laughs> Next. You know, it's not football without a queso, without a cheese dip, right? That's right. So we have here some chorizo, okay? Now we're going to use some Oaxaca cheese or, you know, any any type of creamy, melty cheese mm -hmm. will work, okay? So we saute it like so uh -huh. over medium-high heat. Okay. Now the flavors really come out here. This is one of the most important steps. Okay, now just to get a good mm, saute of the chorizo first. We have exactly. our tasting table, okay. guys. How is the uh, now, Pittsburgh sandwich? Here, it's good. we're like going that? to add it into a casserole. Your mouth You're moving it into a casserole. Exactly. Dish. Okay. Now we're going. <laughs> oh, now we're adding our. <laughs> there you go. We're adding our Oaxaca cheese our Oaxaca or any cheese. melty cheese. Exactly. You mm -hmm. can mix cheeses as well too. Oh, sure if can. you can't get that type of cheese, provolone works well. Okay. Goes into the oven until it's nice and melty. Oh yeah. Melty. Oops. Yes. Serve it with tortilla okay. chips okay. and some pico de gallo or oh, some yes. salsa. So delicious. That's maximum oh, no, flavor. It's so cold it kind of froze. Yes. It's supposed to be hot. It's super cold okay. here. Yeah, I know. All right. Well. No. Okay. What's next? Next, we have our cheeseburger tots, mm -hmm. which oh, are cheese. Cheeseburger tots. Cheeseburger tater tots. Yeah. You see, All it right. grabs your attention right wow. away. <laughs> we have some ground beef, some mm -hmm. onions, and who doesn't like onions and ground beef? Oh my gosh, right? All the so things. You saute that. Actually, you want to saute this for me? Oh, sure. Okay. If you think I can. Oh, absolutely. We're going to okay. add mayo right to the pan. Mm -hmm. Oh, some mayo. Interesting. Relish. And this is just ground beef and onions, right? Yep. Okay. Mustard. Not that you'd want to, but you could do ground turkey if you wanted to. Exactly. Or yeah. chicken. Okay. 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 So we saute that together. Here we have our tater tots. You're good. That's perfect. Okay. Oh, do you uh, want me to mix it more? Yeah. Mix yeah, it okay. until it's well How do you combined. make the tater tot a vessel for this burger meat? Here's the secret, guys. This is the secret. You use something like this, and you press the already baked tater tot. You make a shell. I do. Oh. Make you a make shell. the shell. Oh, it's just the back of a potato yes. spoon thing. Exactly. Oh, if all easy. else fails, oh, yeah. your thumb. Yeah. Now, yeah. that stuffing goes into okay. the potato. Yes. All right? And then we top it off, oh, you got okay, the with some pickles, pickle or yeah. some oh, secret yeah. sauce. Now, are you baking this more, or is this yes, just, okay? Yes, we're going to bake it a little bit more. Oh, my God. Okay? Pickle, yeah. pickle goes on top, yeah. like so. Now, oh, imagine God. all these flavors. Secret mm. sauce. It tastes pickle. like a Big Mac. Yes. Now, the potato. Oh, the brown what are those little mm -hmm. seeds? Sesame seeds. Oh, sesame seeds. That's okay. like your bun that yes. has, you know, the sesame seeds on top. How's it taste, oh, you guys? Carson, oh, you left the segment. You're just over there it's eating. Good. These it's good. Good. So good. And if you have any of these left, pop them out as hors d'oeuvres for Thanksgiving. That's oh. so fun. Right? <laughs> I love it. What do you think, guys? So Is that maximum flavor? Insane. Thank you. Insane. The queso's off. My queso right. was frozen. All right, awesome. Yeah, but these are great. But it's good cold, too. Mm -hmm. And they're, it's all easy. Anybody can I do this. You. That is all right. delicious. All right. Okay, Adrian. You nailed it. Thank you so much. If you want to get more on these recipes, go to today.com slash food.
Welcome back. This morning on Today Food, Good. we are joined by the popular host of Tiny Mighty Kitchen <laughs> over on YouTube, Chef Kia Damon. Hi. She is here with a surprisingly easy dinner recipe that your whole family will love. And we were standing over and we were getting a whiff and I was like, oh, it's like I'm seven again. And it's yeah. like hamburger helping. Exactly, exactly. No, it's definitely a comfort food. Much better. <laughs> but better. It's definitely a comfort food, but um, it's super easy to make. First, you want to start with your onion. Okay. Now I'm going to go through, hold it, and slice it this way. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't matter what size the onion is. It doesn't have to be, you know, restaurant style size, but okay. you can get decent slices about yeah. here. Okay. And then you want to cut it down this way. And you see you already have it's already those diced. pieces, yeah, right? It's already that. diced, okay. right? Uh, so you got our onion there. What else you have goes our in? Onion. Besides the onion, what else goes in? Garlic. Oh, so I like okay. to put. I'm a garlic girl, so I like to put a few a giant few cloves, cloves of garlic. And a great way to do that is to that's a put the pressure oh, yeah. on the knife yeah, like that, and then use the whole clove. And then you use the whole clove, but okay. then you can just open it up. Got it. Like okay. that, and it makes it a little bit easier. Okay. To get that flesh off. Right, so give us onion, a little garlic, kick. right? And onion and garlic, garlic. Okay. and then you chop up that garlic oh, real quick like that. Okay. All right. And give it another little. <laughs> like that, yeah. you know? Okay. <laughs> and then over here, so you're adding it to our pot. This is ground beef. I suppose yes. you could do so ground this, turkey if you, you were do, in that. You could do ground turkey if but you wanted to. But why would you? Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> no shade to the turkey community. No yes. shade at all. <laughs> There's a community? There's, There's a turkey, turkey community. There's a community for everything. Smart, they'll come for you, too. <laughs> all right. And then, so for the second time, then do you just add the broth Yeah, then you it? go ahead and add in your broth okay. and your turkey. Not your turkey. Now you're going to be thinking about oh, turkey. Oh, sorry, sorry. Add in your tomato paste okay. over here. Tomato paste. Nice. Dump in the tomato Kia, paste. Kia, could you use this to hide vegetables for your kids in this? Yes. Now, if you want to do maybe a little bit of broccoli or a little bit of spinach, just to, like, put it in the cheese, then that would be okay there. for the children. You got some carrots. What's in the broth? Is it, like, a beef broth? Yeah. Okay. Just the beef broth. Put in some smoked paprika. Mix mm. that in. Thyme. And then this beef broth here. Okay. Now, while I'm doing this, I actually would like for someone to grate I can do that, this sure. cheese here. Okay. So He's a great grater. A really great idea and an easy thing to do you is you man. keep the cutter like this. Uh -huh. Okay. And oh, if you put the cheese part. over oh, like that, then it protein. fills up. You keep it horizontal. You keep it horizontal, what kind then of cheese it fills are we up. Using here? Just some cheddar cheese. Just Could cheddar. you finish it up for me, please? Yes, yeah, I like cheddar. this because it's quick and homemade at the same time. Exactly. You know what I mean? You can lose the guild of the preservatives and what So you want to mix that in. Okay. Mm -hmm. How much cheese do I need? Mm -hmm. If you could get the, the more, whole the block, better. but I doubt you could get the whole block. Oh, oh, you don't think so? Okay. I don't think you could do it. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm trying it. So okay, challenge. now that pasta was not pre-cooked, right? No, because okay. what's going to happen is so once good. you put all the liquid in here, mm -hmm. it's going to simmer over time. Got it. Oh. And then it's going to be done already. So this it's is going to stay on the stove top. That's going to stay on the stove top. Can't beat it. You're going to close that mm -hmm. like that. And then while you're working the on the cheese, right. I'll be done I'm going to no, Whenever exactly. the cheese is actually finished, okay. seems like a good idea it'll look like this. <laughs> that's fantastic. No, Can't I think you it. did a great job. And no, absolutely. Do, please eat it. So, so you add the cheese over that way. Broker, you resisted Broker, you resisted the urge to make a comment about cutting the cheese. I'm so proud. Why should I when I've got Craig Melvin to do it? No, I think you do an amazing job. But at this point, you will add the cheese. You really do want this whole block of cheese. It's okay. <laughs> You're, off the hook. You're off the hook, but you would ideally put okay. this cheese so into here uh -huh. after it's cooked it toward the end. And Kia, what 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 do we have here? Oh, that's nutritional yeast. Instead oh. of cheese, if you want to keep it. Well, you add that in addition because it adds an extra punch oh. to the dish. So put a little bit of that nutritional really yeast on I use that on my kale. Yeah, yeah, just it's a little really bit. Good. Don't keep cooking. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. And then you, yeah, you the can't beat like this. this. I mean, Thank this you. Is 20 minutes. You know I, I mean? appreciate wow. that. Thank so you good. so very much. And the kids, kids can help. I was just yeah. about to say, they and can help. The kids and they can eat help. it. And I helped. Then you help. Thank <laughs> you, Sophia. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank this you so terrific. much. Thank oh, you that for is having good. me, right? Yeah. Thank you. I oh, appreciate that. Is that. Good. My kids will gobble that up. <laughs> yes. I might just take it home. Dinner is served. Yeah, All right. Kia, yeah, thank you so much. No, thank, thank you so much. Guys. Thank you, thank you. Be sure to check out her full recipe. It's today.com slash food. Hey guys, welcome to The Boost on a big day here at Rockefeller Center. Tonight is the annual lighting of our Christmas tree. But before its shining moment, check out the story behind the Norway Spruce's journey from upstate New York to right here on our plaza. Here's Joe Fryer. 
When Matt and Jackie McGinley moved into their Vestal, New York home in 2019, they paid little attention to the giant tree towering over their driveway. We had a whole punch list of things that needed to get repaired, things that we wanted to update or remodel, and frankly, the tree was just kind of in the background. But someone else did take notice, Rockefeller Center's head gardener, Eric Pazze. In pulls a car, a uh, guy gets out. My name is Eric, I'm the head gardener from Rockefeller Center. I'm here to look at your tree. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> Do you like understand how crazy you sound right now? They couldn't have known Pazze is a Rockefeller Christmas tree legend, having personally discovered each tree for the last 30 years. I Googled him and realized, and I quickly texted him out, this is legitimate. We thought they were dating a lot of other trees, that maybe ours would be considered. And then as the date got closer and closer, we realized that, in fact, we probably did have the Rockefeller Center tree. The Beginleys knew they wanted to be part of this special tradition. And donating the tree, they hope it brings joy during a busy and sometimes emotional season. This is not about us, but it's about being of service to other people, giving them that chance to go and make memories by the tree. And for those like us who've had loss, to go back to that space and remember the people that they love. The McGinleys will be remembering Matt's mother, who passed away four years ago. I think she would think it was the coolest thing. Like I keep having this feeling of like, who am I not telling about this? There's somebody that, that I should be, that I feel like I ought to tell and it's her you know um, I was able to reach out to her best friend and that person will be with us on the day of the cutting the McGinley's two kids will be at the tree cutting too. Zoe age 12 and Charlie age 9 admit the hardest part of the whole process was keeping their trees star status hidden until the official reveal. <laughs> I'm really bad at secrets, but I've been able to keep this one. <laughs> the tree stands 80 feet tall. It will arrive in this very spot this weekend with a full police escort, and it will become a part of New York history with 50,000 LED lights making it shine bright as a symbol of the holiday season. Three, two, one. The deeply rooted tradition of the Rockefeller tree goes all the way back to 1931, when a Christmas tree was put up by the construction workers building Rock Center. Today, more than 100 million people visit the plaza each year to see the world famous tree. McGinley say they're proud that tree from their own yard is playing a special role. Matt's mom used to always emphasize joy, and so that idea of joy in that space is really exciting. Such a beauty, and we'll see you later tonight during the star-studded lighting on NBC and Peacock. Now, though, let's turn to another holiday adventure around New York City with our girl Donna Ferris, and she had all the hot spots to get into the spirit of the season. Christmas in New York is magical, from the world-famous Rockefeller Center tree to the dazzling windows and light show at Saks Fifth Avenue. There is no place like it. If you can finish this sentence, Christmas in New York City is... Magical. That's my word too! At Macy's Santa Land in Herald Square, you can have your very own Miracle on 34th Street. Santa! I'm so excited to meet you. I saw you at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade and I thought I have to come visit you. Do you have a special Christmas wish, Donna? Well, I would love to see the Sugar Plum Fairies at the Nutcracker on stage. Oh, the wonderful, wonderful Nutcracker Ballet. Well, it looks like my wish to Santa came true. Throughout the month of December, ballerina Ashley Hodd takes the stage in George Balanchine's The Nutcracker. You even smell like a Sugar Plum Fairy. <laughs> Seeing the Nutcracker at Lincoln Center during the holiday season is so iconic. Why do you think that is? You have a Christmas tree that grows up to 41 feet tall, snowflakes twirling around. You have angels gliding across the stage in the Sugar Plum Fairy's kingdom. I mean, it's just so many different treats for people of all ages. Mm. I could never do ballet when I was little. 
Is there one little twirl or dance move you can show me? Sure. Okay, I'm gonna give it my best shot. Just give it like a little shuffle, that's right. And then you go side to side. Not as magical, but it's a, it's a moment. <laughs> Next, I twirled over to Woman Rink in Central Park. Come on, let's skate. And enjoyed the bright lights in a New York City pedicab. Jingle all the way. To keep the spirit going, I stopped by Frosty's Christmas Bar in Times Square. Just stepped into a Christmas fairyland. A holiday destination decked out in ribbon, tinsel, and cocktails from the North Pole. Tis the season. Holiday markets like Bank of America's Winter Village at Bryant Park are a festive way to spend the day. We plan to browse around the shops and see uh, what gifts we can pick up and probably get a hot drink and just enjoy the ambience. You can buy things that are so different. 170 vendors sell their unique gifts and I wandered into one of their shops. Coco Puzzles uses original illustrations to promote inclusivity and diversity. And it's inspired by your daughter. It is inspired by my daughter. Love it. In the spirit of the holidays, I'm going to give away my Christmas wish to others. I've got Nutcracker tickets and a bunch of $200 gift cards. Let's spread the love. You just got engaged. It's your birthday. And it's the holidays. Yes. But it's our first Christmas together as well, so we're kind of starting a tradition now. I'd like to make your Christmas that much more special. So I'm going to give you tickets to George Balanchine's The Nutcracker. Oh, wow. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> are you guys excited about the holidays? Yeah. What are you most excited about? My birthday. Your birthday? <laughs> Guess what? I'm one of Santa's helpers. Yes, I'm sort of an elf, yeah. So I want to give you guys a $200 gift card. Yeah! What do you guys look forward to for the holidays? Uh, I'm looking forward to going to my grandma's house and eating turkey legs. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Waking up in the morning and having um, pre opening presents with my family. Aww. Okay, now I have to tell you a little secret. I work with Santa. And Santa told me to give you guys a $200 <gasps> gift card. Tis the season for holiday movies. We'll introduce you to the woman behind some of your favorites. That's right after the break. the boost it's that time of year people enjoying all those holiday rom-coms and while many of the stories center around Christmas one woman decided it was time to show Hanukkah some love Chanel Jones has that story I grew up in an observant Jewish home we observed all the holidays we traveled to Israel I was immersed in my Jewish world and upbringing here at Jean Meltzer's home in Herndon Virginia it's beginning to look a lot like Hanukkah but ever since she was little, Jean has had one forbidden love. I am a nice Jewish girl who has always loved Christmas. How can you not love the beauty of Christmas? There's the lights, 
There's the music. It's about joy and family and chunky sweaters and hot chocolate. And so it's just a very magical time. It just fills me with joy. But amid all the Christmas cheer, Jean started to feel a little left out. As I got older, I would go to bookstores and I would always see that one table with Christmas romances on it. And every year I would go and look for a Hanukkah romance and there never was one. So I just decided to write it myself. It's called The Matzah Ball, about two childhood flames from Jewish summer camp reunited years later for a big Hanukkah event. She wanted to scoff aloud at his chiseled chin, the disturbingly sexy shape of his gorgeous and prominent nose. Instead, her heart only beat faster. Jacob Greenberg had morphed into a full-grown and totally kosher stud muffin. Writing romance is always a blast because you get to experience the love, the first tensions, the excitement. I knew I wanted to write a Jewish romance and I knew I wanted it to be a Hanukkah romance. For Jean, part of the fun was writing much of herself into the book's main character, a young Jewish author who's secretly obsessed with Christmas. She loved everything about Christmas, the music, the throw pillows, the decor. It brought her to this place of unapologetic joy where nothing bad ever happened and everyone found their happy ending. My family was more observant, so for observant Jewish families, you don't celebrate Christmas in any form. I would like try to sneak uh, little green construction paper Christmas trees and my mom would come and tear them down. Sorry, mom. And uh, um, I would tape up my socks to the windows, hoping that Santa would arrive. And sadly, Santa never came. Something else Jean shares with her protagonist, a life-changing battle with chronic illness. Rachel wanted to fall in love. She wanted to get married, find her person, but who would love her with CFS? I was diagnosed with ME-CFS, myalgic encephalitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, at 18, 19 years old. And as the years have progressed, I have basically become homebound and disabled. 75% of people uh, cannot work full-time with my disease, and 25% are actually bedbound. And I had an incredible opportunity to write what we experience on a page for people who might have no experience with chronic illness. Since it came out, the book has won praise from everyone, including one very important fan. My mom cries every time I call her. She's so happy, and there is nothing like hearing your mom, like, spell, you know what I mean? So even though I have to talk about how she ripped down my green construction paper <laughs> for Christmas tree, she's very proud. As for her own love story, Jean found it with her husband, Jeff. And with the matzo ball's success, she already has more books in the works to keep the menorah fire burning. I never thought this book was gonna get published. The way it's been accepted has just been beyond my wildest dreams. It's a Hanukkah miracle. <laughs> Speaking of holiday movies, we're about to introduce you to a woman who writes them all year long. She is known as Christmas Karen, and for her, Christmas, it's a year-round endeavor. Joe Fryer's back with her story. We barely know each other. I've never been more certain of anything. For so many, those made-for-TV holiday movies are Christmas comfort food, with ideas cooked up by writers like Karen Shaler. I think right now with everything going on in the world and all the negativity, we need these Christmas movies and novels as an escape, something feel good, something we can watch with our families, and that's why people are gravitating toward them. In a span of just 18 months, Karen wrote three of those Christmas movies, oh yeah, and three Christmas novels, a prolific feat earning her the nickname Christmas Karen. It's 24-7, so I feel like I'm living in Christmas all the time. Having Christmas year-round. Is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? I sort of went down the Christmas rabbit hole a couple years ago, and I tell people, I pop my head back up and look around and see what's happening in the world and go, okay, I'm, I'm going back down. I'm happier down here. And I do a little Christmas Karen walk. We caught up with Karen in New York in front of the Met Museum's Christmas tree, a soaring 20-foot blue spruce that perfectly reflects her spirit. For you, Christmas is in your blood, right? I just found out from my grandma that my great aunt was born on Christmas Day, and her siblings named her Mary, M-E-R-R-Y, middle name Christmas, and their last name was Day. And so she's in Ripley's Believe It or Not for being named Merry Christmas Day. Yeah, caught me doing a little research here. A former journalist, she put her reporting skills to work a few years ago before writing her first Christmas movie. I watched all the Hallmark movies and Lifetime movies. I sat there with a notepad. The first break is at 18 minutes. The first kiss is here. They have to have a near-miss kiss. Hey, no fraternizing with the enemy! 
You know, I, I really studied it. That research inspired her to write A Christmas Prince. Aren't you worried they're all talking about us? I'm saying you're out of my league. The popular romantic comedy set in the fictional land of Aldovia was streamed on Netflix in 2017, introducing younger folks to the genre. The different generations like, what is this cheesy, crazy, silly, ridiculous movie? You acknowledge they're a little bit cheesy, right? I say it's uplifting and heartfelt, but if somebody says, Karen, that movie's cheesy, I'm like, if that means uplifting and heartfelt, yeah. You call it whatever you want. Just watch it and read it. <laughs> Next came a Lifetime film, Every Day is Christmas. You remember being that much in love? Like so many movies, it was inspired by A Christmas Carol with Tony Braxton channeling Scrooge. I took away their Christmas bonuses because they didn't meet their goals. Then Hallmark tapped her to write her third movie, Christmas Camp, about an ad executive who's sent to a rural retreat for a holiday attitude adjustment. They even take her phone. It's called Disconnecting to Reconnect to Christmas. That prompted Karen to create a real-life camp featuring all kinds of Christmas-themed classes. Now more books and movies are on the horizon, like Toy Building Elves and Santa's Workshop, Christmas Karen Keeps on Going, a Yuletide assembly line. Your world is 12 months of Christmas yeah. a year, and you're good with that, right? It's an honor to do what I do. It's a big responsibility. But Christmas 24-7 works for me. I love it. And as long as I can keep bringing people joy, I'm not stopping. Coming up, we're sharing some of our favorite holiday traditions. Stay with us. here on the boost as we get ready for tonight's big tree lighting it is one of our favorite traditions and savannah al craig carson and i brought some of our other favorites to studio 1a even one of our own oh looky looky there she is our tree is always puny and so we do a really elaborate lighting one <gasps> wow get ready two one ah you gotta have white lights because it speaks to Christmas and it feels like peace. The kids make their own ornaments. That's done. Let's start with Haley. A little hope. You gotta have lots of tinsel. There's a technique. You take a lot of it and you just keep throwing it in blobs. It's gotta look like it's dripping with beautiful icicles. I need a little help. Carson! Can you help me out with some lights? Thanks, Hoda. Oh, no, no, not white lights. There you go. No, 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 no. Here's some lights for the tree. It's only colored lights. 
What kind of person would put white lights on a tree? I mean, I know it looks fancy. Christmas shouldn't be fancy and elegant. It should be festive and fun. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Grab this book right here. It's always under the tree. It's called A Special Gift. And my father would read it and all of us would sit around him. Now that my dad's not here, I have carried on the legacy of reading this book on Christmas Eve. We like to hang a stocking with all of ours. That's camouflage, and we do it in honor of the troops who are overseas and couldn't get back home for Christmas. We'll put this one front and center as a reminder. Ornaments, Craig, you can start with these. All right, well, thanks, Carson, but we actually use a pickle ornament. We also started hiding the pickle in the tree, and one of the kids will find the pickle, they get a surprise, and then we hide the pickle again. Baby Jesus there. Happy birthday to you. When we were dating, this is our first Christmas together. Dinner's over, out comes the birthday cake, and these people begin singing happy birthday to Jesus. I was in, and ever since, we've been singing happy birthday to Jesus. Happy birthday, baby Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Savannah, I believe this is for you. Thanks, Craig. I always like to put something a little sweet on the tree. We used to love having candy canes on the tree, and by the time Christmas rolled around, all the candy canes were gone. Put it up high so the kids don't get all of them. I love Christmas tree ornaments that have a sense of humor and have some personality. A Christmas cactus, because I'm from Arizona. I like ornaments that are kind of weird, honestly. Here's a New York City taxi cab and a little pretzel. The weirder the better. And look at this fancy little flamingo right up front. One thing I started doing was making a photo ornament of the kids every year. And I love opening the ornament box and seeing how they've grown in a year. Here's our family. Oh, oh there's our family, our Today Show family. Tree looks good. Al, you gotta finish it off. Ooh, wow. I can never get it untangled. Our tree topper is a beautiful black angel. Almost there. You don't feel it's Christmas until she's on top of the tree. Yay! We got some ornaments that represent these beautiful black angels. I'm going to put the angel right next to the baby Jesus. We've done the ugly Christmas sweater. We've done the ugly Christmas suits. Even if you don't want to wear an ugly Christmas sweater, you can always put one on your tree. Bad taste is always timeless. Really looks lovely, but something's missing. Oh, there's, there's no pine scent. The scent, you know, especially when you cut it down and you've got the, the pine sap on your hands. Nick and I have been going out cutting a tree since he's been about six or seven. We're kind of lumberjacks and we go out and we put on flannel shirts. Got a tree, right? Yeah, we did. I stole these out of a New York City cab. That says Merry Christmas. <laughs> We all have our favorite songs around Christmas time. You might even have yours playing right now in the background. But did you know how Christmas carols came to be? NBC's Kelly Cobiella is giving us a look at their origin and some of our favorite sounds of the season. In a small medieval city in Cornwall, Southwest England, at the historic Truro Cathedral, the sound of Christmas. The legendary cathedral choir singing the story of the birth of Christ. That famous service familiar to so many started here in tiny Truro more than a hundred years ago when carols weren't sung in church. They were singing them in just out in their, their own homes, in pubs, in the streets. They just, you know, there they was a, a culture that had uh, gone very much out of the churches and, and into, the, into the wild. A local bishop hoping to lure very merry revelers away from pubs and ale and back to church replaced sacred music with the people's songs, carols, and the crowds followed. Nine lessons in carols. Many of the songs we know as Christmas carols have pagan roots, tunes to teach and share for those who couldn't read or write. Lots of carols began as songs to teach a story to a child. So lots of them are very simple, memorable tunes. Children and musically challenged correspondents. Now the holly bears a berry that's 
as white as the milk. As white, uh, I don't remember the tune That's part. Fine, I'll with you. I'll with you. <laughs> this is the carol in its full glory. This carol, Sans Day, originated in Cornwall, and like so many Christmas carols, spread far and wide beyond England's shores, passed on by sailors and travelers. Some carols change along the way. This is how O Little Town of Bethlehem sounds in Britain, but we sing it like this. Same words, but completely different melody. In Truro, the choir boys and girls spend their early mornings and late afternoons learning dozens of carols to be perfectly tuned for the Christmas crowds. Are you nervous? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> They've rehearsed to be ready for the big day. It's the music we've heard countless times, yet every year, come back for more. We know them. We know them so uh, well. They're part of our DNA. Songs that say it's Christmas. For Sunday Today, Kelly Cobiella, Truro, England. Coming up, we got the latest viral video. It'll boost your day. That's right after this. We've got time for one more story, and this one, it'll leave you with a smile. Take a look. More proof this morning that a little kindness can go a long, long way. A woman was flying with her service dog named Munchie <laughs> when the woman next to them noticed the dog seemed uncomfortable. So guess what? She gave up her pillow, gave it to Munchie. Aww. Munchie's cozy. She even put her arm around them as if it were her own dog. Munchie's owner called the woman her angel. That's it for today. We hope we were able to start your day off with a boost of holiday cheer. And we'll end it with more during our annual tree lighting, Christmas in Rockefeller Center. We'll see you then. And we're back tomorrow with more of the boost right here on Today All Day. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Anal stuff with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today.
Thanks for joining us on Consumer Confidential Holiday Handbook Edition. I'm Vicki Wynn. As we head into the busy holiday season, we're going to help you save time and money from avoiding online scams to the latest return policies and the new ways AI can help you plan a holiday feast. But we're going to begin with an exclusive behind the scenes look at Amazon's new cutting edge technology aimed at delivering orders faster and more sustainably than ever. I visited one of Amazon's innovation labs in Boston to see how it all works. From robots to artificial intelligence, Amazon says it's revolutionizing the way consumers get their orders. It comes as e-commerce sales are predicted to grow at least 10% this holiday season, reaching $278 billion, according to Deloitte. Amazon alone estimated to deliver 13 and a half million parcels each day. And it's all about innovation. I'm inside Boss 27. This is a state-of-the-art facility just outside of Boston. And with me now is Amazon's chief technologist for robotics, Ty Brady. Ty, thanks for being here. My pleasure. So this is the first time the public will see some of the new technology you are rolling out for the holidays. What happens in a lab like this? We are reimagining the future of robotics so that you can do your holiday shopping even better. Today, Amazon launches Sequoia, its brand new robotic system in Houston. The company says it's capable of stocking merchandise 75% more quickly and delivering your orders 25% faster. What was the problem you were trying to solve with Sequoia? We want to offer a wider selection for our customers. We want to do that in a very efficient manner so they can pass on a low cost to our customers. Brady says Sequoia also makes it safer for employees, reducing the number of accidents and repetitive stress injuries. So you don't have to get on a ladder, you don't have to bend down on your knees, you don't have to reach up uh, really high. They're able to bring these totes from the warehouse to a okay, workstation so like this, where I met up with David so Guerin, who helped design and build Sequoia. A machine has gotten this item out of the warehouse, brought it over here, and now what happens? Now the associate finds the item uh, that's up on the screen, so we take it out. This is a yellow phone we, case. We scan it. Okay. We put it in uh, a tote to be sent to another part of the building for packaging. We let the system know it's, it's, it's in there, and then this will cycle through and deliver us another tote to pick something else out of. And just how do those towers move around? Meet Hercules. Today is graduation day. The finished robots form a line and drive themselves onto their own shipping pallets, where they'll head off to work at fulfillment centers around the world. Amazon is also introducing Digit. This new bipedal robot can grab and move orders in warehouse spaces not designed for humans. So I think something a lot of people are curious about is what happens between the time they click buy now and the product arrives at their doorstep. You're going to walk me through that. Sounds good. Okay, so I'm going to buy what is a bestseller on Amazon right All now. All right, very good. The Instant Pot. It's going to be hot this holiday too. Be hot, right on your phone, ready to go. Okay, I'm going to add it to my cart. By the time you did that, yeah. I've sourced every Instant Pot in inside our network to figure out what's the best way to, to bring that to your house. The system found my Instant Pot at a fulfillment center in Penns Grove, New Jersey. From there, it was driven to Carteret, New Jersey, where it was boxed, labeled, and loaded onto another truck, headed for a distribution center in the Bronx. That's where the delivery van picked it up and dropped it off the next day at 6.48 p.m. to me. Welcome to my office. The company also has more than 10,000 Rivian electric vans across the U.S. to reduce its environmental impact. Branson Ramirez drives one. I can do about 150 stops, uh, maybe 250 to 300 packages. New technology evolving to get us what we want faster and more sustainably this holiday season. Amazon isn't alone in gearing up for the holidays. Retailers across the board are also getting ready. Target adding 100,000 workers for this shopping season. And Walmart opened three new fulfillment centers and 36 drone delivery hubs. And tis the season of giving, but don't let scammers take advantage of your generosity. From credit card fraud to identity theft, I recently stopped by the third hour to share how we can all protect ourselves this holiday season. I feel like we talk about this, you know, around the holiday season, but this year in particular, is this a bigger problem than normal or is it just one of those things where we have to remind people? It is a big deal and every year it seems like the problem grows. Last mm. year, consumers lost $8.8 billion mm. to fraud, this according to the Federal Trade Commission. And in 2.3 million of those cases, credit cards were the top form mm -hmm. of payment and it's easy to see why. You know, yeah. this year, more than 53% of people surveyed by Bankrate said, yeah, I'm absolutely using a credit card for my 
holiday shopping. It's convenient. Often you get cash back or miles yep. or points, but you have to be really careful about where you're plugging in your credit card numbers. You know, a lot of sketchy websites pop up this time of year mm -hmm. saying, you can get that X-Wing fighter Lego set that's <laughs> normally, uh, you know, selling for $200 for 50 bucks. Don't fall for those. That's a red flag. Scammers set up these fake sites to try to steal your money. Mm -hmm. So be really careful with your credit card information and only use those cards if you can pay them off because interest rates are at record highs on credit cards right now. Beyond the websites, though, I feel like text message scamming yes. yeah. has just gone I through just the roof. Yes. Hey, this Amazon scam, yes. for folks who aren't familiar with it, what is the Amazon scam? Yeah, Craig, and here's the thing. It's not just Amazon. Amazon happens mm. to be one of the biggest companies, but scammers will use the name of Apple, mm -hmm. Best Buy, UPS, and it's yes. really a twist on the same scam. So it comes in via a text message yes. or an email or even a phone call, and it's basically the same thing. We're going to freeze your account. We're going to cancel your Prime yep. membership. Your Apple subscription is going to be suspended. We need your payment information, Al. Please go to this link and mm -hmm. enter everything. Update it for us. If you get a message like that, delete it right away. Do not click on mm -hmm. anything in it. And if it's a phone call, hang up immediately. If you are concerned, maybe something's going on with your Amazon account, in their case, go right to Amazon, log in, look in the message center. If they mm. need to reach you, that's how they're doing it. Mm. They don't got time to call you and yeah. be like, yeah. oh, no, we need this yeah, information in point. your mother's maiden name. That yeah. is not real. That's good. I came from a text that said, if you do not make this purchase of $119.99, yes. click this link. Right? And I'm like, this just doesn't sound right because I didn't just spend that, but why would they be asking me that? I mean, exactly. it's, it's sneaky. And let's say it was a real fraud alert. Someone had gotten a hold of your credit card. Mm -hmm. Call your credit card company directly and mm -hmm. ask them about it. Okay. Never click on a link that is sent to you unsolicited. Okay. And there's another uh, few scams that we should look out for, too. So it's autumn, oh, winter. It no. gets cold. What do they call it? Cuffing season, right? When no. people sort of couple up just for like yeah. the warm. Yeah. Well, there's nothing wrong with going sure. online. <laughs> no, it's a thing. Oh, it's a thing. It's beyond a thing. Okay. <laughs> Nothing wrong with going online. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and hopefully you're not online looking for romance, swiping right or left. <laughs> but here's where it gets bad. This would have been rough for you. It's just your anniversary. That's true. <laughs> yeah, we do not want to go there. No. But people are online all the time looking for love. The, the <laughs> moment it gets sticky is if someone you have never met suddenly asks for gift cards, or money I mean, to doing? come and visit you, Craig, don't or get young. they People want you to invest it. in their crypto, you know, wow. so that you can, this happens all the time. Yeah. Literally people you lose millions of dollars wow. to these romance scams. So that is your first sign and cut off all contact because you know what, that person is not real. Go ahead and do a Google image search. The chances are they're using someone else's picture to fool you into thinking they are a real person. It's probably just a group of guys in a boiler room somewhere right. trying to get you just, to I mean, get your money from you. Somebody? Stop talking. Okay. Yeah. How about charities right around this time? Yes, Al. This is a time where we see a lot of suffering in the world. Also, people, it's the season of sharing and caring. You want to give. But a lot of new charities are popping up, or you might be donating to a cause that you haven't before. Always go directly to the website. It doesn't matter if you see it on social media or someone's shared it on their Facebook. Look up that on organization website. on Charity Navigator or Charity Watch to make sure it is actually legitimate and pay only on that website. Skim Scam. Oh, yes. Skim scams, Al. Okay, so these are those little devices that get <laughs> I'm trying to move this along. You're just sitting there. Skim scam. He's obsessed with the romance scam. Yeah, I know. I'm trying really to keep happen, Craig. quiet over okay. here. Okay. You do not want to enter your information on a pin pad that looks uh, uh, not yes. legit, or if you're having to press those buttons really hard, it's most That's common. Scary. Yeah, it happens at gas stations and ATMs. Use the well-lit ones. Use the pump that is in view of the attendant. If you're, if you're ever in doubt, just go inside and pay yeah. with your card, or go inside and talk to the bank teller to so get the money. So when you put your ATM in, yeah. or your your card in, right. and you is, slide is it, it loose, or what? What's the telltale sign that somebody's? Put something in there. Sometimes it's really hard to tell, but mm -hmm. usually what it is, it's, it's a whole device that they put on top of the legitimate uh, device. Yeah. Oh. So if you're looking closely, sometimes it's a little loose or you can kind of peel it back. It's not attached oh, physically. To, it's not actually part of the machine. And it's really there just to steal your credit. Or if it's a cardboard box with some LED. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a real problem. Yeah. Yeah. If it's a light bright, stay away. All, yeah. all I was saying about the romance scams is if yes. you're dating somebody all of a sudden and you like you just met them and they're asking you for money, Very you true. probably don't okay. want to be yeah. dating them. I think you need to let this go. Talking to them for months online. The they thing. say That's they're different. in the military. Yeah. Yeah. They just can't see you, but yeah. they could really use a gift card. Next thing you know. That's a good, no, that's a good yeah. point. Coming up, how artificial intelligence can help you plan your holiday feast this year. Plus, TikTok's new feature that lets you shop while you scroll. What you need to know before you buy. That's all ahead when Consumer Confidential returns.
Making your Thanksgiving meal cheaper and easier sounds like a dream. Well, so is the answer using artificial intelligence? The possibilities for AI are seemingly endless, but how does it stack up in the kitchen? My team and I decided to try cooking an entire holiday meal following recipes and a shopping list generated completely by AI. Turkey, stuffing, potatoes, and gravy. There's nothing like a Thanksgiving meal. This year, turkey prices are down 29% compared to last year. But items like ham, sweet potatoes, green beans, and canned cranberries are up almost 60%. To start planning that feast, consider how many people you're serving. That determines how much food you need and how much it will actually cost versus your budget. So to take out some of the guesswork, I'm gonna let artificial intelligence figure it out. There are some options. I could use Google Bard, Microsoft Bing AI. I'm gonna try ChatGPT. Make me a complete Thanksgiving turkey dinner shopping list and recipes for eight people with at least four sides for less than a hundred bucks. Within seconds, give me what looks like a pretty simple, easy to follow shopping list with basic ingredients, 10 to 12 potatoes, two pounds of green beans, four sweet potatoes. This sounds like about enough food for eight people easily. It even let me put in specific requests for recipes using an Instant Pot, an air fryer, or for guests with gluten-free restrictions. It recommends a store-bought pumpkin pot. That'll be simple. And this is interesting. It actually says the cost may vary, but you can find budget-friendly options. Then it recommends that I shop for sales, use coupons, and consider store brands to keep costs low. It's almost like ChatGPT watches our consumer confidentials on today's show. Let's go shopping. I start at the top of the list. The most important ingredient, the star of the show, the turkey. Next up, we need some butter. All right, I got my olive oil, and whenever possible, I'm listening to ChatGPT buying store brands. Salt and pepper. I'm looking for onions. One, two, three, and four sweet potatoes. Some of the ingredients I didn't even need. So my shopping list calls for celery and carrots, but I took a closer look at the recipes because I'm not making the stuffing from scratch. I don't even eat these. And most importantly, it's not Thanksgiving without pumpkin pie. Okay, I've got all my ingredients. Grand total, 85, 47, under 100 bucks. Time to start cooking. My team and I get to work. Ugh, giblets. We follow the AI-generated recipe word for word. The AI says we're gonna use salt, pepper, paprika, and garlic powder, but it didn't actually tell me an amount, so we'll just eyeball it. And that looks like a good-sized bird. Last step, we're gonna cover this bird with some foil and pop it in the oven. The instruction said to cook it at 325 degrees for three and a half hours. All right, we'll see how she does. Meanwhile, we get started on the side dishes stuffing from the box. But not everything went smoothly. <laughs> oh no. Some of the instructions were a little vague. It doesn't tell you to cut the potatoes, but we definitely don't want to boil them whole. So why don't you go ahead and cut them into one inch squares? The shopping list also didn't tell us to buy milk or brown sugar, which was required for some of the dishes. The recipe reminds me to add some salt. All right, these are done. Easy peasy. Good. Finally, our bird is cooked, the stuffing fluffed, and the potatoes mashed. AI did not help me with carving instructions, so I'm just gonna do my best here. Moment of truth, the turkey is ready. The reviews? Hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah? Paprika, <laughs> you would've thought. <laughs> potatoes are good. Cheers to an AI Thanksgiving, guys. It is worth noting not everyone on our team is a Michelin-starred chef, so there were a few hiccups when AI wasn't specific on instructions. We also found that if you're more specific, you can get better results with the prompt. More information is better, but also look over your list closely. Check that your ingredients match the instructions, especially if you have dietary restrictions. Also, to save time, consider Bopis. Buy online, pick up in stores, ordering your groceries for delivery as well. Just keep in mind, it may end up costing more because you're paying for a tip and delivery fees. Well, with Americans expected to spend $184 billion this holiday season, TikTok is making it easier than ever to shop. The platform recently launched TikTok Shop, a marketplace that allows brands and users to sell products directly through their videos. 
but there are some potential pitfalls. This is my TikTok shop order. Users can now shop on TikTok with the click of a button. I've got so many parcels from TikTok and I've never shopped on there for clothes before. The company adding a shop tab for U.S. users. That means they can now buy tagged products directly from videos and live streams in their For You feed. I've been influenced. So today I got my first TikTok shop order. TikTok says it's already signed up more than 200,000 sellers to TikTok shop, including major brands like Revolve, Benefit Cosmetics and PacSun and small businesses like Karina Nielsen Thomas's personalized gift storefront. One of my videos went viral and I think I had about 200 orders come in just that day. I know for sure that TikTok, the algorithm in TikTok will favor people who are promoting their TikTok shop and their products. With holiday shopping set to kick into gear earlier than ever this year, the social media giant is also offering discounts and coupons to buyers on the platform. But it's not all smooth shopping. Even though TikTok's rules require several verification documents from sellers, some users complaining of dubious product quality or products that never show up at all. So the things that I'd be concerned about would be brand new accounts. I'd be worried about uh, accounts that don't have much activity with their followers because we know people can buy fake followers and fake comments. Meanwhile, TikTok is facing bans in schools and local governments nationwide over concerns about the Chinese-owned company's handling of user data. TikTok promising users a secure checkout process, saying that all TikTok-protected U.S. user data is stored in the U.S. For seller Karina Nielsen-Thomas, the surge in orders was overwhelming, forcing her to close her TikTok shop for now. I've seen it firsthand, uh, the success that it has. The downside is that because it is a new platform, um, again, it has the kinks in it. Would I open it up in the future? Yes, absolutely. TikTok says if your order never arrives or is significantly not as described, you can reach out for a refund. But of course, that is up to you to be proactive to get that money back. As an extra layer of caution, experts suggest researching the seller. Look at the comments. See if other people had a positive experience. If the comments are turned off, and that could be a red flag. Also, make sure you read the return policies before you buy a product. Right now, TikTok is allowing 30 days to submit a return. And finally, how you pay matters. Your best bet is a credit card because your card company can help you dispute claims and charges if needed. Up next, are free returns a thing of the past? What you need to know about the latest return policies and how to avoid extra fees. And later, with food prices soaring, we're going to tell you the best ways to maximize your savings at the grocery store. Consumer Confidential continues after the break.
Whether it's a gift or something for yourself, sometimes the item you purchased isn't exactly what you expected. The solution, return the item at no additional cost and get a full refund. But now, more retailers are implementing a return fee. I recently broke down the latest return policies with Savannah, Hoda, and Craig and shared some tips to help you avoid extra costs. So how come? Why are they uh, limiting returns? What's going on? In a word, Hoda, it's mm -hmm. cost. Yeah. Last year, returns cost retailers more than $800 billion, according to the National Retail Federation. Yeah. Now they're trying to claw back some of that yeah. money by making sure they add a little bit of friction to the process for you. Um, one retail expert tells us apparel is really where you're going to see a lot of returns. Four in 10 clothing items go back. That costs 5 to $9 to ship, 2 to $3 to process. Mm -hmm. Don't get me started on the people who scam the system. They order an expensive item, then they try to return something that's less expensive. All of this Wait, adds what? to How do you do that? Wait, what Wild. are you talking about? It's like you order a pair of nice black pants, and then and you, you put in a cheap pair of black pants what? and return it. Doesn't happen a lot, but it is that's certainly terrible. fraud that terrible. adds to the cost for all of us. Yeah. The other thing is people do this, we're all probably guilty of it, bracketing. There's even a term for it. You order multiple of the same yeah. item in different colors, knowing you're only going to keep one sweater, you're going to return two. Oh, my wife is a bracketer. I feel yeah. like they... Yeah. That. Yeah. You just kind of outed Lindsay. That a, but that's yes. against the law. They is did. It? They really did. And that was when we were kind of tentative about yeah. do we really want an online order? They wanted yeah. to make it so simple. Yeah. Those days are limited now. Uh, okay. Yeah. So okay. how might we see this manifest itself? Yeah. Like well, what are they going to charge? Yeah. Apparel companies really started leading the way, right? H&M, Zara, the fast fashion, they were quick to introduce these fees because apparel sees such a high rate of return. Right. But now you're seeing it. J. Crew, uh, Abercrombie as well. Nordstrom Rack has been doing it for a while, up to nine dollars. Stocking fees. Or Restocking something? fees, absolutely. Yeah. Amazon is doing something interesting. It's a $1 return fee. They say it is because they want to add friction. They want people to just think twice about overbuying, overordering, and uh, returning right. things. But that, they'll always offer you a free return option, whether it's Kohl's or Whole Foods or an Amazon locker. But if you decide to go to UPS for some returns, it will cost you that extra dollar. They're also trying to reduce their carbon footprint, ultimately, right? Because yeah. all this shipping back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. leads to a lot of emissions. Mm -hmm. So what, what can we do to keep our return costs down? Okay, first. Besides not returning. Don't mm -hmm. overbuy. Use Hoda's technique where you put the item in the cart and you kind of just sleep on it Wait. for 24 hours. Yeah. Do you really want that item? Then consider buying the, at retail outlets that have a brick and mortar because usually when you return mm -hmm. in person, it's free. Something else, Andrea Warrock, she's a money-saving expert. She said, join the loyalty programs. Call and ask customer service, hey, could you waive this fee one time? You can also ask about packing everything in one box from mm -hmm. multiple orders. Oh. Just be careful. You want to have packing uh, order slips and make sure that it's okay with the retailer. Sometimes they don't like that because it messes up their organization system. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what, if it doesn't work out for you, you can always re-gift or donate that item. Always read the fine print. Don't Thank assume you. that because returns were free mm -hmm. last year that they will be this year. Coming up, as food prices continue to rise, simple ways to cut costs at the grocery store and shop on a budget. Consumer Confidential will be right back. feel like you have a lot on your plate when it comes to planning that holiday meal, especially this year with food prices going up. 
If you are experiencing sticker shock, shopping for groceries, you are not alone. Rising food costs are making it harder to get what you need, but there are a lot of ways to maximize your dollars at the grocery store. So people are seeing high prices across the board. Where are they the worst, do you think? So Hoda, overall grocery prices are up 3% year over year. And from two years ago, they're up 17%. This is according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Here's the thing. What's on your breakfast table is probably seen the biggest spike, 6% for cereal and pastries. Uh. The good news though, Hoda, things like meat, poultry, fish, eggs, those have remained stable. Okay, if you want easy, simple ways to cut costs, yes. what's the best way to do that? The best recipe for saving money in the kitchen, Hoda, is to have a well-stocked pantry. Have you heard of this trend on TikTok? It's called ingredient households. No, I don't even know what that is. is. What is it? So when you grew up, did you have things like ding-dongs and chips yeah. away and chips yeah, in your house? Of course. Okay, that's not an ingredient household. Okay. The ingredient household uh, is you've got the oats to make the oatmeal cookies. Uh, you have the chocolate chips, you have the all-purpose oh. butter. Turns out ingredient households are not only healthier for you, but it's a better way to save because you're starting with the, the basics in your pantry. So dried beans, pasta, rice, canned sauces, nuts, dried fruits. Putting together Got those it. items can result in a lot of recipes. Don't forget, you want garlic and onions. Everything yeah. tastes better with those. Potatoes is another thing. Cheap, they stay and last a long time. And finally, you don't want to just have salt and pepper. You need the paprika, the cumin, the oregano. Get all the, yeah. Get all the basic spices to give pizzazz then, to your meals. And also, you don't have all that processed stuff sitting exactly. around and making you sick. Okay, so let's talk about a basic shopping list. Okay, so we talked to Monte Carlo. She's mm -hmm. a budget writer, and she told us 15 ingredients, and she says you can make 50 different dishes. We'll show you them on the screen. Things mm -hmm. like eggs, tortillas, cream cheese, puff pastry. Uh, there you see a cheddar, a block of cheddar cheese, so, ground pork, cold chicken. Just having these 15 things can result in 50. 50. recipes. Let me show you a whole chicken, Hoda. Think yeah. of the things you can do. Yeah. You can roast it and put veggies on the side. Yeah. You can dice it, make it a pot pie, shred it for tacos. You can put it in a chicken noodle soup. Of make course, a casserole, casserole with the leftovers. What about game day, Hoda? Chicken tenders, buffalo chicken. Boom. Dip. Here's the thing, a rotisserie chicken. I have a hack for you. If you're a member of Costco, that thing is $4.99 always. Huh. Think of all the ways you can use it. Right, you can have three meals that week Easily. just from that chicken. Yes. How about, we only have a minute left, but yeah. meat and produce. Okay, use the less popular cuts. Become friends with your butcher. Like what? We're talking, everybody's obsessed with chicken breast. Yeah. The thighs, the I thighs. Love the, no, the yes. thighs the best part That's of the chicken. all the flavor Hands is, down. yes. The sirloin tips, so you talk right. to your butcher, you say, when did the good cuts go on sale? You mm -hmm. get those. And also adding beans, that adds fiber. It's good for you. Mm. The blue zones where everybody lives for mm -hmm. years. They're eating beans. And then with um, produce, you want to avoid the things that are already cut for you that are fresh. Buy frozen fruits and Buy vegetables. Frozen. Peas, last longer. kale, last longer, picked at peak nutrition. What if you, last thing is, what if you need recipes? Like you don't, you need yes. budget friendly recipes. Where can you get them? Okay, so there's a trend on TikTok also called the Dollar Tree Dinners. People are showing how they're making meals. Not all of them are super healthy, but some of them are using things they buy at a dollar store. There's an app called Meal Board. Meal It'll Board manage app. everything for you from your recipes to what's in your pantry. And then finally, the Budget Bites food blog. There's an app too. It'll help you plan your recipes down to the penny, Hoda. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. And that's our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential. For all of us here at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. It is truly the most wonderful time of the year, spending time with family, friends, and the people we love. And how do you show that love? Why, with some sweet treats, of course. Sweets are great. You really can't say no to sweets. Our holidays revolve around food. Everything is food. All the good food, the sweets, the cookies, the treats, the candy, the cakes, the pies. I could go on for a long time. <laughs> time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. One of my favorite holiday traditions is coming to see this fabulous Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. And folks from all around the country love doing it too. And speaking of from all around the country, there's a baker in Brooklyn who's bringing a little taste of Mexico to everyone who wants it. Don Paco Lopez Panaderia 
has been serving up fresh Mexican pastries for 30 years, and its customers have been lining up for just as long. I've been coming here all since they opened. They're very well known in the neighborhood, very nice. Well, I've been a customer since I was about five years old. I've been coming to Don Paco since I was very small, maybe like three or four years old. And now I teach across the street, so I come every morning before work. So they're going to treat you like family. That's because they are family. Hello, Miguel. Oh, how are you, sir? Bienvenido to Don Paco Lopez Panaderia. Ah, gracias. This bakery isn't run by just one person, but eight siblings, their parents, and extended family. Para mí es importante dar un, un buen saludo, una sonrisa, desearles un buen día. Everybody has to be involved one way or another. And at this time of the year, it's all hands on deck because one of their most popular treats, Rosca de Reyes, or King's Bread, reigns supreme. On January 6th, many Mexican families enjoy this traditional sweet bread decorated with candied fruits and a little baby doll hidden inside. It's a reference to Jesus Christ, so it's about celebration. A celebration called King's Day, which marks the three wise men's visit to the manger. Now, if this sounds familiar, that's because New Orleans' famous king cake shares the same Catholic roots dating back to medieval France. For the Lopez's, it's more than just a holiday. It's the bakery's busiest time of year, so everyone grabs an apron to help out. We reunite for Rosca de Reyes instead of Thanksgiving. Oh, well, <laughs> so you know you're going to see your whole family at least once a year. Once a year, yeah. I can see my father and my mom very proud to see everybody. It's working 24 hours. We're talking about 30 family members coming and do the Rosca de Reyes. Todos nos reunimos a veces después de no vernos tanto tiempo y todos participamos en un día muy especial y es un día bendecido para todos. What's it like working with family? Because that's a great thing, but sometimes maybe not such a great thing. Yeah, that's, that's true. Sometimes we don't agree with everything, but the most important thing is that at the end of any discussion, goodbye, I love you is something that we have that uh, from our parents. And that's not the only lesson that's been passed down in the Lopez family. The knack for baking goes back generations as well. Miguel's grandfather was a baker in Acatalan de Osorio, a small town in Mexico. He passed on his craft to his son Francisco, Miguel's dad, who later moved here to New York City with his family. My father immigrated in 1972, 73, and he started working in the um, restaurant business as a dishwasher. But the dream of baking bread and pastries never left him. That's when his kids stepped in. Together, they opened Don Paco Lopez Panaderia. We said, why not to open a bakery? So we started in 1991, we opened the business. To survive for three decades, not just survive, but to, to, to do so well, to be such a part of the community, take something special. What is it about this place that's so special? That everything that we make, everything that we bake or cook in this place, we do it with pride, with so much love. And that family pride is clear in their recipes. So it was time for me to try my hand at making their popular holiday treat. Oh, Miguel, uh, who are these youngsters here? Oh, look, Don Paco Lopez, my ah, father. Senor? What's up, What's up? My mom, Leonela Lopez. Ah, senora. So gusto. Does he remember making his, his first rosca? ¿Usted se acuerda cuando hizo la primera rosca de Reyes? ¿Cuántos años tenía? Oh, Eight years old. You were eight years old. His father, my grandfather, he used to put a wood uh, box so he can reach the <laughs> table and teach him how to make Rosca de Reyes. Who's the better baker, him or you? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, baby. Yeah, still the original. Now it's Rosca time. 
The first step is creating the ring of dough. Do like this. Oh yeah, that's a piece oh, of cake. Piece of, oh yeah. Piece of bread. And after we have it, we put it upside down to high baby juices. All right. We so everybody food. knows there's a baby Jesus in there, because oh, yeah. you're back taking a bite and all of a sudden, ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. Nobody wants to bite baby Jesus. Making Ruska is hard work, and it takes everybody in the family to meet customers' demand. How many will you do in a day, Miguel? To satisfy our demand, they have to be almost 2,000. 2,000? 2,000. 2,000 a day? Yeah, two, zero, 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 wow. thousand a day. Very good, how? Huh? But any chance, they're, they're looking for um, another job. One of the siblings don't show up, I'm ready. Okay, perfect. That's good that we have a record. <laughs> we decorate the Rosca de Reyes. I prefer to start with, a, with the cherries. Then I can start with the orange peel. Mm -hmm. So basically it's to make colors around. Look at that, it's beautiful. Ta-da! Ah, oh, it's a thing of beauty. And so once you've you're, you've done this, then will it, do you put it in the, into the oven? No, right they have to it? they have to see it. They have to proof uh -huh. at least like twenty minutes. Depends how the weather is. That affects the proof. Yeah, definitely. See, that's why you need a weatherman to work. Oh yeah, that, that, that's why you are here. After the sweet bread sits, time to go into the oven. If I can ask your mom, what does it mean to pass this tradition on? For her, is very proud to pass to the next generation. Oh, uh, well, it's obviously in good hands. And I mean many hands. And I believe you've got a few other family members you want to bring uh, various One or two? Fun. Just a couple? Come in, guys. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Wow, look at this. Oh, wow, do you know? Oh. And, and they're still coming. <laughs> and they're still coming. Wow. My gosh. Well, the small family of the Paco Lopez. Well, this is one heck of a nice, sweet family. Uh, I guess everybody, we should all try a little piece. Of Don't forget, if you get baby Jesus, uh -huh. you have to throw a party. You have February. to throw a party. Oh, yeah. And wow. Look, so you, I hope so you oh, 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 whoa, 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 I didn't, I didn't see that. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. Oh. Well, all right. Party at Just my take place. This. Here's to a wonderful tradition. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Salud. Gracias. Mm. Gracias. Gracias. Um, um. <laughs> up next, the delicious reason Philadelphians line up outside this Italian bakery every Christmas Eve. When you think Christmas treats, you usually think fruitcake or Christmas cookies. But if you're in the city of brotherly love, cannolis are synonymous with Christmas. Philly is known to be full of grit. We'll get through anything. 
No one knows that better than Termini Brothers Bakery. Over the last 100 years, this family-owned shop has faced a Great Depression and a global pandemic. But for them, there's no challenge bigger than the holidays. The Super Bowl for us every year is Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve at Termini's is something that is of its own. We got a long line of folks here that have been waiting for a long time to get these, and people wait all year for this special day. Every year on December 24th, hundreds of people wrap around the block to be among the first to grab a classic Italian treat for their holiday celebration. I mean, people drive from Baltimore, they drive from Boston. I, we've even had people fly in from California to be here, to be in that lot. People are lining up at the front door at 12 o'clock at night, and they'll sit there with chairs and food. When we open the door at 6 o'clock, we bring everybody in. We're hugging, we're kissing, we have music. People that are unaccustomed to, you know, what Christmas Eve at Terminis is, ask questions like, are people crazy? Is it that good? And they miss the point of why people are outside. It's a sense of community. It's, it's a Philly thing. As Philly, some say, as their famous cannoli. There's many, many products that we make that are special to so many different people here, but nothing is more dynamic or special to our customers than our cannolis. Sure. Gotta come and get the cannolis, best cannolis around. The shell is never soggy and it's cream based and it's got these little chocolates in it and it's just absolutely perfect. They taste that tradition, they taste that flavor. It's hard to find and hard to duplicate a Termini cannoli. Today, we are going to make probably about 4,500, 4,500 cannolis today. Hearing my grandfather's story um, about how much passion he had with these recipes, being that they came from his hometown in Sicily, it forces you to, to realize that this isn't just a product, you know? This is a legacy, and it needs to be handled with respect and care. The legacy of the bakery dating back to the early 1920s, when Giuseppe Termini immigrated to America from his home in Italy and joined his brother Gaetano here in Philadelphia. He left his family and everything that he knew to come to a country he knew nothing about, didn't speak the language, had no idea about what he was walking into. Somehow found a way with his brother to be able to start just 
a little tiny kitchen and brick by brick grew this business into something that he can pass on to his son. After opening its doors on this same street in 1921, Termini Brothers quickly became the go-to place for all types of cakes, cookies, and of course, cannoli. Giuseppe Termini turned his little corner bakery into a landmark of sweet sentiment. How are you, Mr. Termini? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. People would say, what's your secret? And he didn't get into a real long-winded thing. His answer was, make, make good, good stuff. stuff. Just make good stuff. That's all. It was very admirable. Even in his later days, when he was in his 90s, he was working seven days a week. When the store was closed, he would sit here in the store. This was his life. This was his life. Giuseppe taught the business to his only son, Vincent Sr., who would later grow up running the bakery. His sons, Joseph and Vincent Jr., were by his side learning the family trade. We realized we have something very, very special here. So we kind of knew as we got older that this was the path that we wanted to take. Before long, it was time for them to live up to the Termini brothers' name and take over as new owners. My father has that Sicilian Philly blood in him. He's a stickler to the rules. You know, it took him a little bit of time to really trust what Vinny and I are doing here. I remember when we were first shipping out our cannolis, he was so happy to look at the addresses and see where they were going. Today's a little warm up, five or 600. In about two or three weeks, we'll be looking at about maybe 2,000, 2,200 boxes. And he was going, I can't believe it. It's going to Arizona, it's going to California. Look, this one's going to Hawaii. And you know, I think it was at that point that my father had 100% trust that the business was going in the right direction. Although some things have changed over the last century, a lot has stayed the same. But this was my grandfather's favorite machine. Is it the most efficient? No. Is it cranky in the morning? Yes. It's like an old man, this machine. But all of these, the benches, our steam kettles, you know, our gas stove, they're all original. Another constant over the years, Philadelphians love for terminis, literally. It's our wedding day, so we figured we'd do what we enjoy. We've, we've tried many cannolis in the area, and probably these are the best by far. Now Joseph and Vincent Jr. are adding their own chapter to the bakery story, preparing to reopen at its original location across the street, turning it into a small cafe. It says, on this spot the tradition began. Termini Brothers, Pasatoria, founded March 19, 1921. This is where it all started. This is where it was in 1921. There were two brothers and they used to bake in the back. These were the original light fixtures that my grandfather had. It took very, very good care of them because they're very rare. So this is the original deed. This is the kind of artifact that we're planning on putting up. But for now, Time to get ready for another Christmas Eve. Termini's 100th, to be exact. It's probably the most stressful 15 minutes of the entire year when we're getting ready to open that door. Is it not? It is. And it's the same people every year, and then it adds on. You know, so if you can imagine over the last 100 years, the line's like down the block. We look at this line at Christmas Eve like they're a part of our family. And I also enjoy Christmas Eve at the end. Um, we normally gather around with our staff, everybody, because this is a team effort, a family effort. And without everybody putting their lives on hold for a period of time to make this family tradition so special, it would never happen. And I get a text from you every year saying, yo, bro, did great. So proud of you. I can't believe you got through it. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a tremendous feeling. Goes to show, nothing's too tough with a little Philadelphian grit and your bro by your side. Working with my brother is a truly an honor. I, I can't even put into words what it feels like to know that regardless of opinions or disagreements or uh, different philosophies, 
that there is always somebody there that has your back, no matter what. I can't imagine like one person, you know, taking over a third generation business and not having a sibling to lean on or count on. I love that I get to work with my brother every day. Coming up, an old fashioned holiday craft, finding a new generation of fans on TikTok. Man, I gotta tell you, on TikTok, Logan's Candies, five million of you love their videos. And guess what? Probably almost as many love their candies for decades. But what they're known for this time of year? Candy canes. Let's all give a big round of applause for candy cane number one, live and in color. There it is. And by December 24th, we'll have made about 100,000 candy canes one by one, just like you're watching right now. Wow. He's TikTok's very own Willy Wonka. On an app where the only rule is to keep things short and sweet, these eye-catching videos have racked up millions of views. That's actually a pretty good video. Jerry Rowley is the candy-making star and owner of Logan's Candies. His daughter, Abby, the mastermind behind the camera. She came to me and said, Dad, there's a social media out there called TikTok. I thought we should get in, and I didn't really know what that was. We're going to start counting out our stripes. As always, we're going to begin with stripe number one. I never intended it to be this, you know, marketing thing or this, like, you know, this huge thing. I was just like, oh, I'll just post some videos and see what happens. I think it was just something that people had never really seen before. It was like, there's nothing else really like it. Now millions of folks follow Logan's to watch Jerry pull, fold, and bend all sorts of candy canes by hand. Within about 72 hours, we had over 25 million views. And it was just unbelievable. We couldn't believe it took off like that. It's just been amazing for the store. We've seen a big growth in our shipping and even just people coming in. We want to get him like a shirt or something that says like, I'm TikTok famous. Next up, the candy man himself. He does. <laughs> what flavor is it? Oh my gosh, I should know that flavor. <laughs> <laughs> well, mostly just the TikTok videos were really fun to watch. And the way that they made the candy, I thought it'd be really fun to come try like homemade like candy because I've never had that before. People definitely will recognize him. He thinks it's so funny and strange, and I do too. While the internet craze may be new, Logan's Candies has been perfecting its craft since 1933. We hand make all our candies here the old fashioned way. We have the original recipes that we've been using for 87 years. So we're just gonna begin to pull this out here a little bit. Give it a little tug, a little pull, a little stretch. We get it just the right length and thickness. We're gonna give it a little twist. And right before your very eyes, we have created the candy cane. By the time we're done, we're gonna fill up this entire table and we'll make about 400 candy canes this size out of the one batch. Jerry developing a sweet tooth for the business at just 12 years old when the store's original owners hired him. So I rolled candy canes that first year and bagged candy canes and, and then the next year I started learning to bend the candy canes. By the time he was in college, he was hooked. So when an opportunity to buy the business came along, 
Jerry and his then girlfriend Susie decided to take it on. We actually uh, started dating about uh, two weeks before I bought the store. We got married in 1985, and then we've just been running it together ever since. We were just babies running the candy store. I was still in school, I was only 16, so I would um, get out of school early and come right to work. The Logans, the family that started the business, trusted the Rowleys to carry on their sweet legacy. And the wife was still working here when Jerry took over. Then they would say, oh, we're so thankful that you guys got the candy store because you're doing it like we did. And they were just so thrilled. 40 years later, the Rowleys have preserved the store's traditions. And with their daughter, Abby, by their side, that sense of family has stayed strong as well. I have a lot of good memories just of being like a little kid, kid in a candy store. I would hide under the table over there, and then I'd just come out to give samples. I would like wait for my cue. Then once I started, you know, when I could see over the table, that's when I started uh, <laughs> working on the table. Logan's Candies makes over 200 treats, but their candy canes remain the most popular all year long. There's St. Patty's Day. We do shamrocks for Easter or springtime. That's a little bunny head, candy cane basket. Do those for Mother's Day and Easter. Star of David's for Hanukkah. There's also one other candy cane they make that has a very special meaning. We're making the Hannah cane here, which is named after our first daughter, Hannah. After waiting nearly 10 years to have children, the Rowleys created a candy cane to celebrate the momentous occasion. The burgundy and white, they're beautiful and they're very special. And we made them the year she was born, not knowing that she would only have a very short life. Oh my gosh. Hannah, she was amazing. Hannah loved the candy store. She just loved sharing the candy with everybody. But when Hannah was just three years old, she was diagnosed with leukemia. It was always amazing to me that she just had such faith. And she would tell me, Mom, if, um, if I were to die, then I don't want you to spend all your days crying. I want you to take care of Abby. I want you to laugh. She didn't want me to be devastated because she knows where she was going and she wasn't going to be in any pain anymore. So she was really amazing that way. Sadly, passing away just five years later. My heart will always be broken. I'll be missing Hannah until the day we're reunited, but I'm so thankful that we had her. The Rowley's love for Hannah is apparent everywhere you look. 26 years later, we still make the candy canes, and we still call them the Hannah Canes. And their love for this time of year shines through as well. I like having the Logans because it makes you excited that it's Christmas time and the fresh homemade candy canes and everything. I drive in to get them every year for Christmas. My whole family loves them. We've continued to help other people have really wonderful family memories for the holidays. We realize we're part of Christmas for everybody. So many families coming in 20, 30 years in a row. They're watching the grandkids grow up, the kids grow up. It's just amazing. And they just keep coming back to make a family tradition. Who else can say they do this? Who else can do this with their family? It's those traditions filled with love, family, and food, of course, that make the holidays all the more sweeter. Good Wednesday morning, and we are following breaking news at this hour. A U.S. military aircraft going down overnight. Good morning. It's November 29th. This is today. Deadly crash. An Osprey carrying six crew members plunges into the sea off the coast of Japan.